Hello, and welcome to the first annual Vid Somewhere 2023. Joining me is Artisan Bubblegun, world famous. And 2-Bit. Yes. I, uh, I'm not sure how you guys, uh, you guys still have me here. I've been trying to leave. Can I go <laughs> home? No. You signed a contract. You're not allowed to leave. Okay. And also, believe it or not, Fenerep. There he is. I swear it's him. So every year we do this thing called VidJam where we encourage the users on our Discord to make videos for the sake of affronting the profession of making videos online. We usually give everybody one week to make the video and then we all watch the videos as part of a watch party. This year we thought that we'd go big and we'd give everyone uh, one month to make their videos and everybody used that time to procrastinate and not actually make their videos and we got all the submissions on the last day at the last minute. So the quality is about the same. It wouldn't have been in the spirit of VidJam if we did it any other way. Yes, I'm proud of you all for at least submitting videos at all. Uh, a lot of the videos didn't follow the rules. We got videos from like years ago, so they were completely disqualified, but we'll view them anyway. And uh, some of them didn't even follow the theme, even though we gave three potential themes and one of them was so vague, it was just make a video related to Don somewhere somehow and uh, still, still not on the ball. But that's okay. That's okay. Wait, those were things? Those, that, uh, I thought those were just like suggestions, starting points. That wasn't even the greatest uh, transgression on our on our rules. We have one such video that hasn't even been made yet. It comes from the future, and they tell us that it's uh, uh, you know, it's complicated time space stuff, and it's very true, and I trust them. That's Artisan's video that hasn't come Artisan, in yet. Artisan, did you forget to make a video? That. No, don't. <laughs> We're supposed to say it was my video. <laughs> yeah, Artisan's video coming in the future. You won't be able to vote on it. But anyway, the system works as follows. We are going to democratically choose the winner, and I haven't figured out a perfect system, but you will vote, uh, rank from one to five, how the video made you feel. One is, I don't think this video should win, and five is, I think this video should win. Uh, you can vote after you see the video or before you see the video. I assume that the videos that get seen first will get more votes because fewer of you will drop off over time. Oh, wait, we should do my video no. first then. There will be some kind of math to balance all of this out. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> the winner will still be kind of arbitrary. It's not really a very good contest. The contest and winning is not the point. But anyway, let's go ahead and get to it. Uh, the first of our videos, it will be... The first video it. is submitted by Pichu Superlover. Thank you. <laughs> by Pichu, Pichu. Let's get straight to it. Okay, so the intro promised you one thing, and I proposed to you a second thing. So as we did our recordings for this, I spent a lot of time joking that people were saying like, Oh man, I've got a whole month to make my videos. I'm gonna make an animation, or like build a rocket ship or something. A month is tons of time. And I kept joking that if you think you need a month, you should really be taking three. So I said to myself, when I do this editing, I'll, I could probably do it in one week, so I'm gonna ask for a month. And it turns out I need like three months because I'm not sure if I was actually gonna get all the editing done in time. So we're doing something else. I have tapped Alan. Hi, Famous. I've been tapped. He's been tapped, he's present, and he is going to help me view videos. Uh, I didn't tell 2-Bit and Artisan that this was going to happen because uh, it took us about six days to do the recording of this and I didn't want to tell them uh, so hey guys, thanks for that six days of work. I'm deleting it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but for a lot of their work, I'm just totally deleting it and we're doing this because it'll be easier for me to edit. I am still gonna put their stuff in there, just not all of it, uh, select parts of it. But anyway though, let's go ahead and kick this off. The very first video we have is by Pichu Superlover, uh, whose name really bothers me because I'm not sure if he super loves Pichu, if he's sleeping with them, if it's a romantic thing, or if he's a superintendent Pichu. Or, which... or, or if it's just commenting on Pichu's uh, bedroom prowess. <laughs> exactly. Pichu, an yeah. excellent lover. Yeah. Regardless, however, he has submitted a video. So I happen to enjoy this old dude with cane stuff, and I was curious if there was some location where I could find like-minded individuals, so I went to the Center of Forbidden Knowledge, Patreon. Oh. So a lot of people think the Discord is actually Patreon exclusive. I, I think because I said it was at one point, uh, it never was. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I. Uh, 
My uh, my Creative Ventures uh, Discord is Patreon exclusive, but we don't like check if you like stop paying or anything. So. <laughs> it would be like work. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so one would... one one time entry entry. <laughs> Contact. Hmm. There is no way of contacting. Let me ask around and um, no response. This can only mean one thing. This must be a puzzle, a way to whittle down the wheat and leave only the chaff, a test of loyalty. Okay, maybe I should try to check one of the social medias and see if I can get a response. Um, no, huh. How about I check the YouTube page and see if there is a... W- mm, no obvious way to contact other than... Hmm. I mean, I do mean business. No. I must not succumb to sin. I did not go down this road to disrespect the gods. I must stand steady. I must do what is right and give up entirely. Well, I guess it's time to... Oh, cool. A new video. Let's see. Um, blah, blah, make a video. Wait, what's this? A Discord invite? My prayers have been answered. The light at the end of the path and an entrance to the heavens have revealed themselves to me. Now to finally enter the sacred realm. Welcome. Are you going to make a video? Nope. I have make a video and beg or be banned. Um. So, uh, yeah, this this I felt like kind of encapsulated the uh, entire premise of our vid somewhere competition. We invite you to come participate, nay, threaten you to participate, and uh, we really don't care about the quality of the submissions at all. So I'm really pleased that Pichu Super Lover dropped what he was doing to half-ass this video and then send it to us. And I have watched it probably about five, six, seven, or eight times now. So <laughs> everyone who gets a, a view can feel proud of the fact that they have subjected me to their content at least probably like five or more times each. So. <laughs> If you ever see an invite to this again, that's one yeah. of the pe- that's one of the benefits. And who knows? Maybe after watching your video five or six times, uh, he'll get someone to do commentary and talk about something else entirely the whole time. Next up is Doctor Scrimgar, who uh, I, I believe has been doing this for actually quite some time. It looked like some of his earlier videos were uh, a, a child, Doctor Scrimgar the child. Can children be but, doctors? Uh, Really good children can. Oh, good. Yeah, good, yeah, good. If, you, if you eat all your vegetables and pass all of your your SATs, then yeah, at any age. That I was think. kind of the whole premise of Doogie Howser, wasn't it? Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was just catching up on some light reading. Hello. My name is Dr. Scrimgard. What is your name, good sir? Hi, I'm Greg. My name is the I'm Alan. I'm Alan, by the way. Oh, well, that's a very interesting name. You see, I, I had a friend once who had that name, but um, he died, unfortunately. So how was your day today? Yeah, it, oh, mine's it was good. a good day. We watched Our some day fun was videos. great. Well, that's Watching some fun videos. I've recorded a, a lot of my own videos uh, recently. And I'm ashamed to admit, admit how many of them start with me sitting in a chair saying, Oh, hi there. Philosophy Summer Reading Challenge. This is the challenge where you submit a short film and enter to win the grand prize. Grand prizes such as this beautiful vintage uh, snow globe. Or, for instance, the grand, grand prize. I didn't do the reading. Which is the... Um, if I can, this exquisite traditional homecoming crown to symbolize the true victor of this celebration of summer reading. Anyway though, without further ado, Mr. Hoffman, I would like to get on with my comedy uh, routine. Oh, would you look at that? It's a picnic, a collection of uh, cakes and pastries that my old How's grandma he having a picnic in his has, basement? Uh, baked for us to enjoy. These little, sorry, excuses for cakes. 
on the deletion block. Bad, bad, bad. I have those days all the time, Dr. Scrimgard. I know how you feel. At least the cherry cake is okay. Oh my, look at this cherry mm. cake. How wonderful. Mmm, delicious. Mm. That's oh. a tomato. Oh, no. mm. you know, I notice every time he's yeah. got that static cut, uh. the goblet gets replaced with an eight oh, ball glass. One... High ball glass? That is glass? one fine tasting glass. cherry, I must say. It's not even a oh, cherry yeah, tomato. Delicious. Does it? I'm gonna watch that. I love Dr. Scrimgard's co-host, though. Oh. This guy's so well behaved. Simply, you see him over there on the right? <laughs> uh, simply hey, exquisite. Yeah. Hey, oh, wait a second, he's got a chicken. Do you see, do you see the gob? He's got a chicken co-host just like you me. You see the, this, oh, the goblet got delicious. replaced with yeah, the high. Yeah, the goblet's gone now. Yeah. Well, he's drinking oh, from boy. it. Huh. That's... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's enough of that. That does then. look like good wine, Scrimgard. Oh no. no! No! Oh God! Oh no! Oh God! No! Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no! No! The God! No! Went. It was foreshadowing! No! Oh, no! no. Keep, Keep filming! Oh my God! His dedication oh, to the that's crowd. That's fine. Oh, it's not fine. There's broken glass everywhere. It's okay. Take your time, scrim guard. It's fine. Scrim guard, clean it up. It's fine. It's not fine. We'll wait. You're doing great. We we love well, your video. Just, um, Sorry Let's about your keep goblet. Going, then, you know? Yeah. I'd like to tell you a, a story. It's a sad story. Not as sad as breaking my favorite glass um, oh, it's thing. my favorite glass thing, goblet too. The, uh, ground, of course. But you, you're a doctor, was, you but, know um, that. I'm sad sorry. story nonetheless. But that all changed the, when I was five years there. old. And I choked on a marble. I accidentally ate a marble and then I choked on it. <laughs> that story was and so from sad. That day on, I don't, I don't understand any of it. It's so great. This is the, this is the best dang summer reading I have ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart Little's got nothing on this. Now I'm sad I didn't do the reading. What is it? <laughs>
And uh, I, I think a couple of things got him. One of the things was that he was using like copywritten songs. Like he just ripped the soundtrack from Back to the Future at one point, <laughs> and then and then when YouTube started to crack down on that stuff, I think he just straight up lost his channel. So, oh no! <laughs> yeah, but it was funny. Uh, you know, copyright infringing, but funny. You can be funny and infringe on copyright. Yeah, you you could be funny and break the law. Lots of people do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, if you're listening out there. <laughs> Look, never give up on your dream of breaking the law and being a hilarious comedian. You know, the problem was that Gallagher limited himself to watermelon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, though, speaking of ancient uh, creators on YouTube, uh, the next one up is by myself and Petera. Hey, I know those guys. Mommy, what are you writing? These are memoirs. It's the story of my life. What's the story of your life? I don't know. I might do another draft. Mommy, is f a bad word? Yes. Come in. Hello, Twilight, and hello, Sunshine. Guess what Aunt Rarity has brought for you? Oh, Rarity, she already has enough toys. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We live in a castle, and I'm still running out of space to keep them. You're exaggerating. Besides, I know she doesn't have this toy. I've got a list, you know. Is that the Glitter Princess playset? Her grandma bought it. Why doesn't your mom coordinate with me? <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh god. Rainbow Dash. Yep. I thought we were past this. You could have hit my kid. You have a kid? Yes, you've met her. Oh, yeah. Why are you here? Well, the doctor says my eyes are going, but I thought that window was wide open. I invited her. Why? It has been too long since we've had a soiree with the old gang. I hate soirees. I know. That's why I'm setting it up. Are we going to do an adventure? I want to do a big adventure. You threw your back out on the last one, remember? Yeah, but that was three years ago. I'm all better now. What? Come in! You! Rainbow Dash! Hi, AJ. For the past three years, the tabloids have been saying that us guys have a queer eye for each other. The fashion show? Do you know why that is? Does she help you pick out clothes or something? Because I gave you CPR, and you told the press she kissed on me and it changed my life. You saved my life. That's not the phrasing that you use! Hi, AJ. Hi, Twilight. I've been getting saucy letters from ladies across the globe, and every morning Granny Smith gives me this no inside eye, like she's on to me or something. You know, you probably could use a fashion show. Rarity, as if you would know, you look like the whole Three Ring Circus collapsed on top of y'all. Very funny, AJ. But you're speaking to the world's premier fashion expert. Exactly. Everyone's afraid to challenge y'all, but I will. You look like someone asked themselves, how could I wear a bowl of Fruit Loop cereal? Well, you know, at least I'm able to accessorize with a stallion. You don't see me misleading the world's female population. Aunt Rarity is f a bad word. Oh my god, did I just drop an F-bomb? No, darling. I said flop. Is flop a bad word? She learned it from a neighbor kid. Oh. <laughs> Behold! Pinkie Pie is upon you. Yes. You. Pinky has become the vampire. Yes. Now we will both live as forever. Our destiny is written in the stars, Twilight. And in the blood. I have a restraining order written in plain black ink. You're not allowed to be here. <laughs> yes. Pinky's time to study law has become infinite. Pinky will crush the restraining order. Don't vampires need permission to be in someone's home? You... That's it! Everybody out! But Twilight, we haven't even gotten the drinks out. I don't drink anymore! I thought that was for the pregnancy! Thanks for having us, Twa. What? Um, I'm here because, uh... I don't um, want any! Mommy, is f a bad word? Yes. So that was Greg and Petarep with Where Are We? Uh, uh, it wasn't quite the same you know, a level of, uh, of cost as the usual. Uh, when I, when I got in touch with, uh, Petarip about that, I was like, Hey, do you want to make a video for old time's sake? And he was like, um, will there be any money in it? And I was like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a concept I've been thinking about doing for kind of a while now. Like, uh, where are the characters? What's become of their lives? Cause it's been like 10 years now. Uh, Petarip and I have both moved on to different things, done different things. I'm a dad. Uh, yeah, I've just been doing, yeah, I've been doing video editing for a design firm and having a good time. But yeah, it's been really busy. Okay. You told me you got sacked with a really nasty fine working on TV stuff. Yeah, yeah, for, um, 
uh, it was for doing some uh, uh, Ethernet cable stuff. I didn't realize that you had to have a license yeah. for that. Gosh. No, I think you told me it was like something like over a thousand dollars for that. Yeah. I know. Life. Yeah. But that was not great. But yeah, you know, I moved on. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 But hold on a second. Your video may have been nostalgic for people, but it was late. It was I late, mean, Greg. It wasn't late. I just uploaded it late. I don't. The rules explicitly state that it must be uploaded by X date. And yours was not one, but two days. I actually late, don't know Greg. how many days late it was. So if you think you can just swoop yeah. in here with an extra two days to work on stuff that everybody else didn't have, <laughs> well. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I gave you the video file on yeah, time. Yeah. Well. I put in like multiple weekends worth of work, and you didn't upload it on well, time. Well, I mean, like it. It was done. It was all of that work. You've let down him. You've let down your fans. You've let down Look, the was, council members. You're setting it a was, bad example. It was submitted at the right time. Well, uh, unfortunately, it is true that we broke the rules and uh, therefore should be disqualified. So those of you keeping score at home, for our video, you can either vote uh, disqualified or extremely disqualified, whichever you prefer. Now, <laughs> I've got one question for the for the both of you here or whoever wrote the story. Now, they were now Applejack said that the accusations were going on for not one or two, not two years, but three years. I can't do three. Uh, for three years. Now, if it was just that one incident, oh, here, I'll set that down real quick. Now, if it was just that one incident, then, you know, it would have blown over pretty quickly. So how come, you know, AJ's continued to have this stigma for the next three years? I think there's something deeper going on. Maybe Granny Smith really does know something AJ doesn't. A no, oh, no, that one's that easy. AJ doesn't. Every time AJ confronts Rainbow Dash about it, it's another comedic misunderstanding. Like they try to go to a restaurant to talk it over and Dash tries to apologize and they bring out the candles and play the romantic music. And uh, then Dash chokes and she has to get CPR again. Another passionate kiss <laughs> for the tabloids. It is, it's a disaster. That sounds it's just like ongoing. some more AJ propaganda right there. I don't know if I trust that. I, I know what the newspapers huh. say and I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, going back to uh, the kid, that uh, that F-bomb thing, that's actually a story from my real life. My own child has learned the F-bomb from the neighbor kids. And periodically, he just asks me if uh, it is a bad word. And I do my best to, to not make a big deal of it and just be like, yeah, yeah, it's a bad word. You shouldn't be saying it. And because of the way I'm always so short about it, he always figures like, well, there must be more to it. And he'll ask me again later and see if he can provoke a different response, maybe with more information. Uh, I try to explain it as best as I can without making it a thing that's attractive for him to repeat on a regular basis. So I haven't heard him ask in a little bit, but there was a period where he kept asking me just about every day if it was a bad word. And every single day I kept telling him, yes. I have a weird twist on that, uh, the whole like being invited in vampire thing. Do you think do you think it counts as being invited in if you have a welcome mat in front of your house? Yeah, uh, so not, uh, welcome's not on every mat these days. You get all kinds of different things. Yeah, no, I appreciated the Gary Oldman Dracula horns on Pete. Yeah, uh, no, we've actually talked uh, over the years. Every now and then, we'll go back and we'll look like old things. And Pederup does have a really good sense of, of visual detail, and it's it's one of the things that I think uh, made Rainbow Dash so appealing. Um, if I thought, I, I should have called you and we could have had Thrakerzad make an appearance. Although I have no idea what Thrakerzad would have been doing with herself for the past ten, ten, <laughs> ten years or whatever. Thrakerzad the Risen. It's like behaving normally. Uh, at that point, she's just like got tentacles sprouted out of her neck or whatever. She's still trying to keep up the charade. Just a terrifying My Little Pony, like Bloodborne Dark Souls boss. <laughs> yeah. Because it was was requested, we did a for uh, we did a charity reading on the uh, on the horror channel of a uh, 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 Christmas Carol, and I I voiced Ebenezer Scrooge in uh celestia voice and uh the main character yeah. in celestia voice. yeah <laughs> he gets he gets pretty verbose at times doesn't he, he? sure does um <laughs> so the whole night is me like progressively getting drunker and coughing more to raise money for charity <laughs> please spirits i just want to die <laughs> just let me die <laughs> just let me die <laughs> Put me in the ground box, future ghost! <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, anyway, actually, while we're talking about your podcast for charity and stuff, is there anything you're currently doing that you want to plug? Well, thanks for asking, Greg. I am the co-host of a podcast called The Jameson Tapes. Jameson Tapes is a booze-driven celebration of horror cinema where myself and my co-host Abysme drink and celebrate the good, the bad, and the spider room moments of spooky and very often silly films. Uh, it's available on YouTube, the Apple Podcast app, and on creativehorror.com, where all sorts of other great content can be found, and in fact... We'll currently be running a contest of our own there very soon. The Jameson Tapes. There it is, Jameson Tapes. So, uh, let's let's go on to Tobletop. Has what you call a video. You ready? Good evening, class. And welcome to another Good episode evening, of Tobletop. Of conspiracy Theory. Let's get oh, good. started. I'm pretty, sh- we begin I'm pretty sure that legally the Muppets are only him. the ones made by Jim Henson. And yes. Not of the Philadelphia so. baseball team, the Philadelphia and, 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 and to settle to settle the debate, uh, the the Sesame Street cast is all Muppets too. Which is associated with Jim Henson's. There is a uh, there is there is a raging debate on whether or not like Elmo and the Sesame Street puppets are also Muppets. They are. Dig a little deeper and find out. Elmo appeared on the Muppet Since Show, actually. Yeah, uh, I believe that he was in the the earlier yeah, season. Top left and he sang with a with a ridiculous Muppet. deep voice at the time. Uh, you know, Cookie Monster went on Stephen Colbert and commented that Elmo uh, plays much younger on TV because uh, because Elmo was <laughs> Elmo was his right out of the place, and then he was like, "Wait a minute, isn't he like five? And he goes, "Oh, he played much younger on TV. Gotta run." <laughs> So Elmo's got to be, like, as old as you think he is, you know. With a flaming hot dog. Is Elmo the mortal? <laughs> uh, you know, I think that Elmo probably dies when his voice actor does. They can keep him going, but, but you know, some, some people would respectfully say that's how it works. Um... The rest is I feel like out. Elmo's had multiple voices by now. Except for the bottom left corner guy. He might already be dead. Yeah. We, we might be witnessing <laughs> an alien flesh puppet of Elmo. A horrific clone of Elmo who is not truly Elmo, but just impersonating our once beloved friend. Elmo, a puppet, get right the hell out of town. <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> That's where the real conspiracy is. We got all this stuff about this bird. Like, oh, there's some similarities between birds. Like, yeah, of course they're birds. <laughs> yeah. They all look like birds. <laughs> the real conspiracy is Il- is Elmo still Elmo if his voice actor died? <laughs> and no, he's not. He's a flesh creature. He's a zombie. They're op- a vampire. They're operating that puppet like a puppet. <laughs> You're <laughs> operating that puppet like a puppet. <laughs> you can't do this. He's already dead. <laughs> yeah, just like, yeah, I noticed that when they both wear shoes, they look like birds wearing shoes. Yeah. As though they were both bird-like creatures in shoes. Yeah. Things in shoes. <laughs> a thing wearing shoes does look more like another thing wearing shoes. <laughs> Conspiracy? <laughs> I'm drawing the lines. The Philly fanatic is said to be from the Galapagos Islands, and he has. I don't know sports mascots, so who who the fuck is whose mascot is cracked out Pac Man? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I think someone from the the uh, group that didn't get all their work deleted did actually know who that was. I think it's a turtle. Who else is an expert? Well, they did a ba- so they did a bad job. <laughs> bad job on that turtle. Yeah, you did bad at turtle. It doesn't look like a turtle. And if you weren't going for a turtle, then good, because we didn't think it was one in the first place. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> Yeah, You're the ones who are dumb. <laughs> diets based on their shapes. Uh, so you can uh, see there, the fruit eaters, insect eaters, cactus eaters, and seed eaters, all with different shapes. So let's it's see. Like we're going like there's lots of different shaped yeah, birds. Yeah. So you know, tube shaped beak, a long tongue, and a green body with magenta highlights. Now that doesn't fit any of the existing categories, but there may have been one he missed. Do you know that uh, woodpeckers, that their tongues actually wrap around their brain cases to help insulate them from the shock of slamming their head against a tree? 
There's so many more interesting fake mascot bird questions to be asked. Species the Calliope hummingbird. Like birdie. That was raised. Like are McNuggets made made out of the bird? In the end. <laughs> the the McDonald Land bird. Is her name just Birdie? You know what? You know what surprised me that they did that grimace shake after all these years. I thought they killed grimace and the bird and the fry guy. Yeah, they for the most part uh, stopped doing McDonald Land, and it it had something to do with uh, the Ronald McDonald charity. There's something about like for profit and charity like mascots. There, there, it was it was a legal thing. Well. The, the, where I was going with that was for sure whether the bird was supposed to be chicken nuggets at the time or not. She's definitely chicken nuggets now because they have killed that character. She is gone. <laughs> yes. Uh, speaking of the last time, well, I guess this isn't the last time, but uh, man, I, I like didn't go into McDonald's for years until Claudia got pregnant, and then she was like, "I crave McNuggets. Go and get me McNuggets." And I was like, "Okay." And I went in and I was stunned by how much it changed. Like the menu, like they had all the menus up and it was like three different signs, but they had so many items that they were actually changing. So it was like you'd see one end menu for a little while and it would change to something else, which made it insanely difficult for me to see if they still just had a 12 piece McNugget. Like I was pretty sure they did, but I couldn't find where it was on the menu. So when I got to the table, I was just like, uh, 12 piece McNugget, please. And hope for the best. Uh, what? What do you sell? <laughs> Everything keeps moving. <laughs> okay, let's hit our next one. This is Oatmeek. You see, Mr. Bond, the entire world is out to get me. Cats, dogs, pollen, dust mites, mold, ragweed. Even as we speak, my immune system is attacking my own thyroid. They say the best defense is a good offense. So, wouldn't you say I'm justified if I retaliate? Okay, so you'll need some context on that one, possibly. Uh, I'm allergic to everything, it turns out. Um, I was having some real bad allergy problems, and it was causing me a lot of insomnia. And in fact, I'm still kind of having some issues with it. But I I've also got uh, Hashimoto's, which is when your thyroid uh, gets attacked by your own immune system. So, oh, yeah, uh, I'm taking meds for that now. But basically, my immune system is uh, just slowly trying to kill me. I'm pretty sure that when I finally die, they'll just be like, yeah, the, the white blood cells finally figured out how to build a nuclear weapon, and they set it off inside his body. They're like, finally, we're safe. <laughs> but I was trying to identify, like, what is causing me the bulk of my issues. So I, like, went to the allergy doctor, and I got one of those allergy tests, and she came back, and she's like, okay, a zero is not allergic, and a three is very allergic, and you are a three. And I was like, oh, on, on which one? Which is like the worst one? And she was like, all of them, you're a three. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> okay. What do I do about that? And she's like, nothing. You, be... <laughs> you might be an alien. You're probably not supposed to be here. <laughs> you, sh you shouldn't be here on planet Earth. You're going to die. And, and so I was like, oh, well, what do I do about it? And she's like, nothing. That'll be $600 after your insurance. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, thanks. Great. So, uh, yeah, I, I paid them a ton of money and uh, now just kind of live with it. I just have to religiously clean as much as possible. And, uh, oh, good. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That was my answer. So, you know, I'll be honest, I would be a James Bond villain if I could get away with it. I had a friend and he used to have this saying everyone remembers first place. And catastrophically last place. And I feel like being a supervillain, brilliant enough to like build a death laser, but instead you use it to try to blow up the planet because of your allergies, and you still get stopped before you can carry out your plan. That is catastrophically last place. And uh, I could be I could be happy living with that legacy. I'm the laser guy who failed, and everyone's glad I didn't succeed. <laughs> Plus, once you fail. Uh, they're going to lock you up so tight and away from so many other things that you're never going to be exposed to any allergies ever again. It's Are a you kidding? They say plan. prisons have like tons of bed bugs and other things like that. It's supposed to be a horrible experience. My allergies would probably well, no, do but terribly like you're, a, you're a super villain. They send you to like super prison where they don't want you to oh. like, like if, the, if you get your hands on bugs, you'll genetically engineer them to escape and then blow up the world again. Oh yeah, they would make me a prison on the moon. So anyway, to sum it up, Oatmeek thought my situation was funny and asked me to do a Bond villain monologue about it, so I did, and we got this video.
But anyway, though, moving on, next up is Dwarven Defender. You know, right, guys. Round two. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Julie <laughs> says teens. And I, I'm starting. What do you think that is he's looking at? Is that a bedspread? Part of a couch? I it's gotta be a that sheet, was like, right? Like I thought it was part of a chair, or but then in the bottom right, there's like a curve. S Slopes incorrectly, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking you know blanket. What? I can't even lampshade that time. That you know, he had an opportunity here to film out of his window. And who knows yeah. what could be out there? There could be a squirrel or a bird. A bug. That was the one that I uploaded the following year. Welcome to my tutorial on how to make spaghetti alfredo. As you can see, I have all the ingredients prepared here, except for the water. Since this is an advanced tutorial, I'm going to be skipping over all of the basics that you should already know. I think what he's calling Alfredo spaghetti Basically, is literally, I think that is actually just spaghetti boiled in salt, and then he added Alfredo sauce. Can you do this one thing for me? It would be just my cup of tea. It's July 20th and my heart knows I need to make my film for the pony bros. This one thing is all that I ask. Could you do this simple task? Tell me what this man should do to stir this Yeah, video this is this is the first video we've seen so far that seems intentionally designed to uh annoy and torture its audience yeah, maybe you could uh, uh time swirl was saying that we needed to ban dwarven defender because he keeps making music and uh i didn't understand until i watched this video yeah this is uh i'm starting to relate this is an assault on the senses um all right yeah you can see no positive on the right no. side of it there's there's streaking there that you don't see anywhere else that's that's clear signs of turning it on its side and scraping it out if he ate it, he'd be lifting it up the middle, and it wouldn't scrape on the side. And made it quick to end your pain. Your memory, it tastes the best. Even though you were whole grain. Uh, hi, Dwarven Defender. I'm Alan. Uh... I hated that. <laughs> <laughs> we all hated that. Everyone hated that. No, I, I see what you mean. I mean, it had the looping audio, it had offensively bad spaghetti, quote-unquote, Alfredo. Now, now, like, like, we accept anything, we have a very low bar of entry, but that... I, I felt personally slighted by that music. Like, someone was out to get me. Additionally, I want to point out, he didn't even double down on a bad idea. He made that disgusting Alfredo, and then... What he did is he scooped it down, threw it away. You saw on the on the right side of that bowl, there was clear signs of, of picking it up, turning it sideways, and scooping it out. If he really ate that, you wouldn't see that. He would have you you pick it up out of the middle and you eat it. Like, like, I'm I'm I, I'm, I'm mad at you. Like on a much lesser note, I'm like a little mad at Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I could have given you more warning. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't uh, want to blunt the impact. Your you know? options will be one, two, three, four, or Time Swirl was right. If you, if you want to hate it more, what makes uh, some of the other members particularly upset is that we actually do have people who who do music on the server, and it, uh, we don't have like. I don't know if any of them do it professionally, but they're at least casual and they they know like some musical theory and some stuff like that. And they have tried to talk to Dwarven about like how music is made and why music sounds certain ways. And Dwarven is like, I'm avant-garde. I'm finding my own way. I'm doing it on my own. Thanks. I'm my own genius. And he is making them all so angry with him. <laughs> like he rejects the idea of a key signature as though that were like holding him back. And and it's 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 fascinating how bad it is in its own right, just because it really is like he breaks all the rules in a really confident way. And, like, and how confidently bad it is, really. Just, just like, the level of, <laughs> of horribleness. This is kind of phenomenal in its own right. So, um, yeah, anyway, though, yes, moving on, moving on, before we think of more horrible things to say about Dwarven Defender. <laughs> uh, I can... Here we go, we have Asako... Sh if we don't move on, if we don't move on, I'm just gonna sit here and say how bad that was <laughs> more. 
No, sorry. Real quick. Like, I I don't know if you're doing a bit, like, with the whole, like, I'm doing an avant-garde thing. Like, you need to know you, <laughs> you did should... a bad job. <laughs> <laughs> Put it up on the chalkboard a hundred times. I make terrible music. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, well, I'm not you, saying uh, you should feel bad. I, yeah. You All need right, to next know up. you did something bad. Yeah, the, the good news is, the good news is, we will not tear into anyone else as badly as we tore into Dwarven Defender. This is the absolute worst, <laughs> worst that we'll give to anybody, so... Here we go. Up next is Asako Shura. Ooh. This is uh filmed on a phone. Yeah, this is this is a this is a valid a bona fide TikTok Look at these nice, hit right here. Highly compressed forest. Just to start with. This is clever. I yeah. I appreciate the low resolution. Uh, it takes a lot sure. less. Of I think that might be our to, fault. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> Who walks around with their hands on their head like that? I mean, is that way? Is I that feel like? Is that Narancia from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures? I do not know. I could not tell you. I don't know who Narancia is. Yeah, I don't know who Narancia is either. Like, I feel like you walk around the woods with your hands up on your head, and you just get like. Uh, sticker bushes and stuff like that up in your armpits. Yeah, like that seems like yeah, yeah, a problem. Yeah, Where are we going? Okay, we're following. I mean, we have no choice. We're the camera, and you're the center of attention. So, oh. yeah. Okay, we're coming. Jeez, like, we're, we're you're we the center of attention. We're going where you're going. Uh, yeah. Well, you you stopped. Don't look at me. You You're the center of attention. I'm like, coming. We're, we're actively <laughs> moving forward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where, what? where are Where's, we going? <laughs> do you want do you want to do you want to talk? Do you, where are you? How about okay, let's All let's right, back look, up. Maybe on. where we're going is too forward. <laughs> oh sorry, that was on us. That we did get distracted. Uh, there was okay. a neat bug there on that the, Yeah, alright. There there was a neat I saw a ladybug there. Have you ever seen a ladybug? They're very brightly colored. <laughs> what? Yeah. What do you want? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah, I'm coming. Where? <laughs> did we just turn around? <laughs> so do you like live around here, or did they just? Um, I think they just oh, killed me. Oh, she killed us. It was oh my nine. gosh! Uh, unreasonable. <laughs> I followed. I followed. Why I followed, did we agree to go? It was just a jump scare. Oh, it's still going. I thought it. Okay, I thought that was. Why did we agree to go out and do that? No, we're still okay. Just yeah. ca casually. I, I would have liked an explanation to start with. And then we got the armpit. You see that leaf? It hit. It hit. It hit. It hit the armpits. <laughs> the <laughs> leaf hit right. the armpits. You yeah, see? I bet there was a tick on that leaf, and yeah, now it's under the arm. Now she has Lyme's disease. Yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah, she's terrible. going around in the forest, okay, leading people to their death. When Asako submitted their video, I thought. Well, they were all excited. They were saying stuff like, oh, it, it's so serendipitous that that we happen to be filming this thing and VidJam's happening, so I'm so excited we get to submit this for VidJam. So I thought something, anything, was going to happen. So when I was watching that, I was waiting for them to have, I, I don't know, narration or something happen. But instead it was just, walk through the woods. Come on, follow me. Walk through the woods. And I was just like, what? What is something going to happen? There, there was a... An observation that I made about this one is that actually this this video had the potential to be really funny if they had played it up for oh, yeah. comedy a little bit more because the the yeah you know, the setup is decent it's like oh you're you're following this person out in the woods and uh, I believe the appeal is that you're following her boobs but at one point the camera like looks away and it's not clear what they're looking at but if the camera had kept getting distracted and like wandering off into the woods and Asako keeps trying to like lead the camera back, like please follow, <laughs> come on, let's go, let's go. Like, but <laughs> like once the camera does it enough times, it's the camera person's fault. You know, it's just like oh another bug, and you like wander up. And so finally, the way that you would set that up is you would look away, and then when you look back, the sword is out and you get stabbed, and it's like yeah. your fault. And it's a comedy. It's really funny. But as that was, it was like uh, Asako just dominated all of that. It was like follow, follow me, follow me. Come on, follow me. And then we got stabbed. We're there. We can't stop following. We are inside the camera. We are imprisoned souls. Why do you, 
Why do you keep checking on us? We're following. Just hurry up. I don't understand why we had to walk for so long to be stabbed. Like, yeah. is this the best stabbing spot? Where you uh, like to stab people? Like, like how, like, you know, there's make-out point and... <laughs> It's a, a stab spot. <laughs> Make sure to compare this video to the video that we described it could have been when you vote on a scale of one to five. One being that uh, it shouldn't win and five being that it's better than what we thought it could have been. So anyway, that's definitely better than Dwarven Defenders. Yeah, music. yeah. <laughs> that's every, every video after this. Better than Dwarven Defenders music. Very least. All right, so here we go. The next one up is uh, Troglodyte, a hunky hot boy on YouTube, but uh, Troglodyte. Hello, Timer. So, uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. yeah, hello, Timer. I, have a lot of information to go uh, I feel like uh, as a judge for one of these things, when you've got to watch some 20 odd videos, um, one of the worst things you can see is someone put up a five minute timer. <laughs> like, I'm going to use all five minutes of this. It's so gorgeous. I want to get oh, back God, out there. No. I really need to crank this out. Five minutes can't go fast enough. So I woke up with a cold this morning. I'm under 20 milligrams of THC, but I can still pile up this thing well enough. Okay. I so really a little bit like of background. Uh, you know, there are great days. conventions, you, you and I've only been to one well. of them, and it was the one where they actually came out to Kansas City. <laughs> and I was like, well, all right, oh, I guess, yeah, I'll go up there. But, but this guy was there, and he did not... Uh, ride or drive anywhere he ran everywhere so like oh <laughs> yeah like it was it was kind of around winter so it was cold but like we would get on the tram to go from like union station down to riverside and he would just like run the whole way and meet us there and uh, cause we, uh that's insane yeah this guy is incredibly fit like he's in really good shape i can't really can't really show you much i can't really teach you much so I really like the myth of Sisyphus, Albert Camus. I have a very, yeah. um, very I like this. basic. It's like, well, I've only got five minutes. Philosophy. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna bring up this Google. Sh like, <laughs> if you'd like to do more research on your own, these are my search terms. <laughs> I can't discuss the entire myth of Sisyphus all at once. That would be a five-minute video all on its own. Life is absurd, but you might as well keep living. You shouldn't kill yourself. You might as well keep going because you know you're gonna die anyway. Might as struggle. Might as well struggle through it and. Uh, see what happens and so i was like oh man that's such a that's such a cool idea i like this art i can make my own art based so on so i'm not clear trying to learn on whether or not stuff. like he got the announcement and did he like make an entire video game within the month time limit kind of inspired by the book but mostly or what original greek mythology but uh, little spoiler because i've already watched through this it's it's a game about sisyphus it's like a fighting game a top-down fighting game and i think the biggest waste of potential here was that he has Sisyphus fighting like this shadow figure, right? And he uses, and not a rock. Yeah, he uses the rock as a weapon, and that is the big. He's totally missed. <laughs> the enemy should be the rock, and the rock can never be defeated. You just keep fighting it until it beats you. And the, yeah, the whole it's a, it, it'd be it'd be a roguelike. Yeah, yeah. You, the, you just gotta you just gotta fight the rock for as long as you can. Yeah. What's your longest Sisyphus run, bro? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I got up to the 50th rock. Yeah, 15th rock. Got it all the way up the hill and it rolled back down. Yeah. I finished it. And, you know, just told, just in an attempt to learn Unity. And I figured I could take it farther because I want to learn, le want to learn how to implement so many more mechanics. So this is what the game looks like in current form. On July twenty second, the big sword. Um, Stab the farts. Multiplayer, but you can't see the host. Style. You can't see the host. Not sure exactly what those are. I Coming down, is it, it wind particles? Because he's on a mountain. Trip to Wisconsin. A few weeks. Oh, it's ago, ammo. I, you know, just integrated it all. Ammo huh. for what? It uh, booted up the host <laughs> environment immediately. I think I missed. I think I've I've missed. I I watched <laughs> this multiple times, and I haven't <laughs> thought about that until just now. What is he getting ammo for? You know, the story of Sisyphus, how Sisyphus <laughs> carried thousands of very small rocks. <laughs> yeah, he put them all in his pants pockets and walked up the hill every single day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that was after you're done beating up the boulder. You smash into a million tiny little rocks. And when Zeus came around, you were just like walking up the hill with a single pebble. Zeus is like, what are you doing? 
You'd be like, like oh, I, yeah. broke the, I broke the, I broke the rock. <laughs> you <laughs> what? <laughs> this is the biggest piece of the rock. I broke it. You gave me eternity. I've been punching this rock for eternity. Now that's all that's left of the rock. And Zeus is like, no, no. You got to pick up all the pieces, put them in your pants pockets, and start walking back up that hill. And, you know, that was the most exciting moment in Sisyphus's life. The rest of it was just pushing the rock up and down the hill, you know. Um, but I've always wanted to learn how to do things like this for future games. And I'm doing it all here. And it's a very silly time. And whoa, look at that. I'm almost out of time. Um, lessons I've learned. You really can learn anything. You can do anything you want as long as you sink enough time into it. Stop wasting your time. Whatever you've wanted to do, you just need to work past the resistance and sink more time. You just need to sit there and work on it. Okay, bye. I mean, I feel like maybe maybe this is like Sisyphus after the like 2,000 years or whatever. 2,000 years later, the Greeks were like, let's give him a spear. And they're like, why? And they're like, I don't know. I just want to see what he does with the spear. Yeah. He's been doing this uh, <laughs> maybe he'll, thing for a long time. Maybe he'll stab the rock. <laughs> <laughs> So that was Troglodyte, or Hunky Hot Boy, or whatever the YouTube name was. And uh, his video was kind of about doing stuff, which is sort of the theme of the entire VidJam deal. Doesn't quite fit, but it's close. Close enough, I'll take it. So it's funny to me, um, so he mentioned GregCon. So last year at GregCon, uh, I met Troglodyte. Great guy. Um, and I thought it was very fitting that he chose to do something with Sisyphus because that man, that man is unreasonably fit. I mean, honestly. So we would decide, all right, guys, it's great, Con. Let's all go hop in the car or hop in the tram and go somewhere, right? And he'd be like, oh, okay, where are we going? I'll meet you there. And he'd take off sprinting. If this man would just take off sprinting across the city and then he would get to the place pretty much at the same time as the rest of us. <laughs> it was, it was ridiculous. The man was probably running like the length of a marathon every single day of this, what was it, three or four day event. Yeah, he was at that level of fitness that, uh, it, it, like when people talk about that, like you really gotta uh, push yourself through. There is a level of cardio and strength when uh, that kind of thing just feels like really good. And it's difficult to explain to someone who hasn't been at that level of fitness. Um, but it really does foster that mentality of like, I can do anything if I just work hard enough. Yeah, we're all talking about how, you know, he's such a strong athletic guy, but I do want to point out that uh, he was in he was using dark mode in in that unity, uh, which shows he has weak eyes. See, the people with the strongest eyes, they can handle uh, long periods of light mode. So that's that's uh, that's my that's my input. This there. coming from artisan who wears glasses. <laughs> <laughs> he was saving his strength to run another like marathon. The glasses enhance my vision. <laughs> All right, your eyes aren't weak. They're very strong, just not focused correctly. <laughs> but anyway, though, yeah, exactly five minutes. Uh, you know. That wasn't as punishing as it could have been, though. Like, at least it wasn't like uh, like Dwarven Defender didn't sit down and decide to make a five-minute song. You may have, you may have just described my new hell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just listening to Dwarven Defender's music on loop while pushing a boulder up a hill while yeah. the Greeks leave things out for you to see what you're doing. <laughs> What's he gonna do with that spear? Oh, he threw himself on it. Well, let's get the spear out of it. <laughs> no spears. We'll, we'll think of something else. Okay, uh, but up next is Marbles. Uh, also goes by Oxfordinary Art. Uh, Marbles is actually a, a pretty good comic artist. We like Marbles quite a lot. He's been on the server for a while. He does this cool comic called Alpaca Comics. Um, you can find him on Twitter, which is now called X. Uh, for however long X remains fiscally solvent or whatever, I don't even know anymore. Anyway, though, uh, yeah, here he is. These are actually watercolor and everything. Tally ho, Natasha! Oh, it's you, Hanna. Why are you wearing that armor? Isn't it obvious, Maddie? It's shearing season! And I'm not gonna let that human shear me this time! It sure would be hard to share an armored alpaca. Now that you mention it, I am due for a share next. Can you please hold something for me? No problem, Natty. What is it? My pet spider, Nina. Spa. Spa. Oh, Nina like.
likes you. <laughs> don't forget her baby <laughs> I love that shot just oh don't worry more <laughs> thank you Hannah I will come back for them once I'm sheared Hannah I like that they leave the bags are you? yeah give it kind of wreck your style there you are Hannah Thank you for watching my... Oh, Nina. Hannah isn't there with you? It was very nice of her to let you use her armor. We will have to thank her next time we see her. I have never seen Hannah volunteer to be shared before. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please, shear me next. I can still feel her little legs crawling all over me. I offered I offered to do voices, but I guess he didn't need a male voice. Yeah, me and Tubit were gonna do the voices. Yeah, Artisan was gonna be do his cat girl voice. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact about this: uh, Marbles is actually gonna give up on the animation. Um, but I remember him talking about how the voice actor that he hired was so excited for the role that he was like, yeah. oh, "I can't disappoint them." <laughs> now I have to. <laughs> Oh, hey, time for a confession. This is the first video I watched. I think I clicked on the wrong link. <laughs> so oh, yeah. that first that first Pichu video, that uh, this is what I watched instead of that. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, okay. So you had no context on Pichu. <laughs> and you were like, oh, this video is nope. cute. Oh, okay. Well, you must, you must have come away with that None. with a completely different impression. Yeah. Marble's actually paid voice actresses to do this. And it's funny because he's been trying to redo his comics because he wants to do a print book of the comic and, and potentially sell it. Um, but he's, he's had to redo a bunch of his old stuff because it's not really fit for print. And that's been a ton of work. Every now and then I talk to him and he's like, oh man, this is awful. But then we announced this VidCon, this, this vid thing, and um, he was like, oh, okay, so now I'm going to do that. And he was thinking in his mind it would be real quick and he'd get it over with. And it stretched out on for eternity because it's a multimedia project. And those are always a lot more work than you think that they'll be. So he was just like, oh my, like, oh my god, he wanted to quit, but he'd hired on two voice actresses. And they were really excited to be doing the roles. So he couldn't give up on the project because then the voice actresses would be really sad. No, I'd say it's worth it. This is this is adorable. So uh, <laughs> we took away a ton of his time. Good. I, I'm looking forward to it, though. I'll definitely buy a book when it comes out. Uh, not, not on uh, any note that he can use, but as for his voice actresses, uh, I will say one thing, one place that they went wrong, and this is a classic mistake, is they did not commit enough to that screen. Wh a scream. Whichever one did uh, Hana, the blonde alpaca. Um, you could tell that there was some restraint there. They just really didn't cut loose. And for, for a scream to sound really good, you have to first figure out where your microphone has to be adjusted so that you can scream into it. And then second, you've just got to lose control. Because that's, that's how you really sell panic. Like, no one's going to believe that you're in any kind of mortal fear if you uh, can restrain yourself. Screams, screams are totally unrestrained, so always got to give it your all on that one. Uh, yeah. uh, on, the, on the note of screams, uh, have you ever had uh, your neighbors uh, be worried about you? Oh, no, I don't think they can actually hear me. Because that's something I always worry about, is like, if I just... If I just let out and scream, someone's going to hear me and they're going to be like, what the heck is going on there? I used to have roommates. Back when I lived with the Alan, we were in an apartment complex and I did worry a little bit about that, but no one ever complained. And uh, when I lived in college, <laughs> people did overhear me talking to myself, but uh, I was never really bothered about it. So you ever like, do you ever go around and say, hey, guys, I'm going to be screaming today or just go ahead and do it? You have to understand. You got. You just gotta let them know. Be like, listen. If you hear me screaming, it's it's part of a script. It's a character. It's okay. Unless I scream, oh god, this is not part of a script. It's just a character. <laughs> uh, it's not a character. Then you can come in. Unless, of course, I'm reading from this page of the script that says, oh god, it's not a character. I really am in danger. <laughs> Look, you'll know. You'll know. You'll, well, you won't know. I'll be really good. But you might know. <laughs>
<laughs> Moving on. Next up is Ao. 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 Might as well ingrassify the local bovids. Okay. Oh shit! More grass. Yeah. We're gonna get stabbed. <laughs> Might as well grassify them. Hello, <laughs> local bovids. Yeah, how about they some approach. grass for you? Look at them. Look at them. You know, if you weren't familiar with cows, that would be very intimidating. So there's this really terrible movie called The Bye Bye Man. <clears throat> that it's like someone took Cliff's notes of The Slender Man and made the worst fucking movie of all time. The whole <laughs> premise of The Bye Bye Man is uh, once you hear his name... If you keep thinking about him, he'll keep appearing more and more frequently. Sounds like an ass. It's like a terrible movie, and that's coming from someone who loves terrible movies, but it doesn't have the fucking decency to be <laughs> terrible in an entertaining way. Yeah. Those, those are the, really the worst ones. For that matter, it's no wonder they don't want it. I mean, they've got these great big heavy cow heads. they got to lift their heads up to get this grass. There's tons of grass just laying around everywhere. <laughs> they wanted grass, they would just get grass. I think they're scared. They they must look scared. They're nervous because they don't know what's being expected of him. Like, yes, be not afraid. Take the. They just don't understand. Like, why do you want me to take this grass? Why not all the other grass? What's wrong with this grass? <laughs> like, they may have already been fed before they let them out. Be not they afraid. They just don't understand. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean... <laughs> The gra There's probably more grass in the field. These are big fields. I love that they're all just staring at him, though. They're clearly intrigued. I love how curious they are, but they're not, like... They don't see anybody else eating the grass, so they don't want <laughs> What's wrong with the grass? Why are you handing it to That's me? It's not... Uh, Demarcus and I visited a local dairy farm on his birthday. And, uh... Uh, because that's the weird kind of thing Demarcus wants to do on his birthday. Um, <laughs> just two dudes in their thirties hanging out on a dairy farm. Um, you can see but, where the milk comes from. Yeah, and uh, I, I was excited to see a cow and milk a cow, and then I got next to a cow, and I'm like, "This animal's considerably larger than me." Like <laughs> that thought. That thought wasn't there for long, but it was there. Like this thing is docile and sweet and could absolutely kill me if it wanted to. <laughs> well, I think they, they do kill a lot of people every year, like compared to the average for most animals. Um, just because people work with them all the time and they are so big, they they, they do kill people. Uh, it, it doesn't take them a lot of effort. <laughs> so do you think Ao, does he, does he live on this farm? Does he just know... I guess he didn't cross the fence. He just approached the fence, which I now? suppose is legal. Ayo, no. The road's forbidden. It said closed, Ayo. Come back. Stop. Stop. You can't break laws and then post it to Vid Gym. An update on the damage caused by the previous Vid Gym. See, I thought he was filling in a hole. Uh, all he did was get dirt from one location and dump it in the hole. So I'm not sure what damage he could be referring to. Uh, yep. Yes, it is. This is where he was throwing the dirt. Only there used to be a bridge there. Oh, uh, he's saying one, he didn't do enough more. dirt. One more dirt handful and it would have been fine. Okay. You were lazy, Ao. One more dirt <laughs> handful. He's angered the cows with his meager offering. <laughs> cows obviously know the sky gods reported their disappointment. <laughs> yeah, they say, what the heck is this shit? Uh, went up to the guy and said, hey, this guy. I don't know. Well, I'm angry. I'm going to rain on him. Yeah. Wasting our time. Make him, make him think about his choices. Standing over here like he's got something important for us and it's nothing. Oh, my God. Is he getting another handful of dirt? That's the hole. That's the hole where he got the handful last year. It's this hole. Man. Yeah. Look Very good to be sticking your hands in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yes, uh, I guess a little bit extra context on that last video was uh, in the previous video competition, AO was filling that that uh, collapsed area with dirt. He was like, he would go out, he'd pick up a little bit of dirt, 
from that hole, drive back, and then throw the dirt into that that little like riverbed. And he was like, oh, I'm going to fill it up. <laughs> and they just he just did that. And because there was no time limit on those submissions, he just did it until he personally got tired of filming himself doing that. Oh. So everyone had to watch him. Yeah. Drive back and forth from a little hole in the ground, back to that bridge, and then back to the hole in the ground, and back to the bridge, until he was just like, you know what, I'm sick of this, and he just turned off the camera. Great! <laughs> Creative torture is sometimes a Good. feature of... What wonderful. ...of the Don Somewhere video competitions. <laughs> but speaking of things, this next one actually wasn't even made for us, it was just made for fun, and happened to be finished at just the right time to submit it as though it was made for us. Uh, it's Caribella. Uh, Jenny? Bobby? I put them to sleep. Listen, I'm the goddess. I'm the goddess, the nature goddess. Don't you see me? I've come here to deliver you a special message. I've I've got a unicorn out there that's ready to grant you a wish. Anything that you want in the whole world. All you gotta do is come follow me. Come on. Jenny, Bobby, why are you Why are they asleep? I put them to sleep, sweetie, because this is only for you. Why me? Because you're special. All right, now you have to walk exactly in a straight line behind me, cause uh, you you just got okay now, and I'll scurry, you know. Yeah, follow me. I'm the goddess. Yeah. Have you ever uh, seen a unicorn? No. Oh, it's so beautiful. A uh, mouse? Uh, is that is that the uh-huh. unicorn? They say, pointing at the gnome. Oh no, there are tons of wait. Uh, I'm walking here. There are tons of, of magical creatures around here that are flocking to the unicorn. They're all friendly and they're all gonna make their own wishes just like you! Oh, I thought you said I was special! Why does everyone get a wish? Everyone's gonna try and make a wish. But only you are gonna succeed. Wow. No. No! They fucking made it! Look, they at least the fucking mountain! Oh my what? god! What? What do you mean? Fucking, they fucking ate it. Someone, someone from this forest, little girl. I'm so sorry. They, but, they killed the unicorn. But you're a goddess. What? Uh, what? It's no. me. I'm the no boy, the unicorn. <laughs> and I'll try and restrain the kid and take the tears. <laughs> I run out as well and grab the child. Goddess, protect me. Protect Listen, me. Listen, just let them. All they want, all they want is to. S- is your tears, alright? If you let them take one tear, then- I will grab the tears. Excellent. You have the tears of a heartbroken innocent. Alright, and I'll, I'll, I'll go over her and- Alright, alright. Now listen. Everyone's gonna think that she is fucking crazy. Seems reasonable. No blood on our hands. No crime scene. Wait. Uh, this sounds fine. Right. Let's go. We will uh, drop the kid off at the edge of the forest. Yep. Yeah, you can just you know deposit the kid on the ground. It's small. It's lightweight. It's easy to move. Classic me. So that was Carabella, and uh, I personally really like that one. Uh, I love a good role playing story, and I especially love it when your players are sadistic, crazy people with no sense of right and wrong. So that was right up my alley. I don't know. I feel like that chipmunk was clearly evil. If I was a child and I woke up and my of my friends had been put to sleep by some evil. Well, I, I guess I didn't know they were evil, but if a chipmunk had put my friends to sleep, I would assume evil. I mean, uh, okay. So the thing about kids is that we spend a lot of time teaching them that chipmunks, if you meet a talking chipmunk, then nothing bad can happen. It's all hijinks and possibly like licensed music. You know, oh, they might right. sing beat I guess it. I have seen Chip and Dale. Yeah, yeah. You know, it is it is nothing but fun. Rescue rangers are there to rescue you. They do not do harm. They are not out to get you. And, and on top fault. of that, We're teaching chipmunks, children the wrong lessons. Well, we're just making it easy for predatory chipmunks. But, I mean, they can't be that evil because they're so small. I want to point out on that uh, point about the chipmunks. In fact, all creatures have the same amount of evil in them. It's the small creatures have that evil is more condensed. It's the same reason that baby snakes are more poisonous uh, is why the chipmunks are just as evil. Uh, <laughs> I do also want to point out that I... Uh, I, I I thought that the character that that little girl that was part of the that was the main character turned out she was just an NPC in a role play. I just want to say you know if they've got more evil concentrated in them and they're tiny they get it all out of their systems a lot faster right it's higher pressure it's a higher pressure zone 
So you can expect that if they were going to do evil, they were going to do it all at once. That was kind of a slow burn. I mean, that was clearly a person in a chipmunk. Had it been a real live chipmunk, the chipmunk would have like peed on her and then run away. And that would have been like all the evil out of its system in one burst. See, this chipmunk was possessed by a higher power and that higher power knows how to release the, uh, the evil more efficiently. More controlled, more carefully. But anyway, though, that one was surprising. It's actually funny because when Carabella posted that, um, she was not actually making that video for us. She was just making it uh, because she enjoys her role-playing group. And so that was an, an honest like work of just, uh, I'm having fun, I'm making something. And then I made the announcement. And she's like, oh, Greg does a lot of role-play stuff. This is technically done somewhere related. Oh, by the way, the amount of tears they had in that bottle, they had to have done this multiple times. Even if they collected a bunch of tears from that first kid, no one cries that much. Like, how did they, you know... How many times did they do this? Well, look, you know, they say that the path to lichdom is so horrible that you really can't describe it into words. I mean, the tears were just one component. It's not just that you have to do the evil a few times. You have to do it enough times that people start to question your sanity. Like, by the millionth time you have tricked a little girl into thinking that a unicorn is dead, that's about when you start to be at a lich level of evil and people start asking, uh, what is it worth, man? Like. <laughs> if anyone ever asks how you got here, you're gonna have to say, Oh yeah, boy, and then there was the time I killed a child's whole family. That was much faster than the chipmunk thing. <laughs> Needed a whole jar of tears, you see. <laughs> oh my gosh, it becomes right. about efficiency. It was a mercy yeah. thing, just doing the evil chipmunk thing. I didn't think about it. Yeah, they were slow burning into that unspeakable evil. They That's did, where it starts they, and it works its way up. They didn't have to just put the friends to sleep. They could have killed them and saved themselves so much effort. Oh yeah, she would have been so sad. <laughs> Time safe. Perfect crime. Yeah, it's a slow crime though. Gosh. They'll get there. They'll get there though. Anyway, next up is cheese. Duh! Today marks 50 years since a chain of banana-related murders occurred in California. A simian beast referred to as Schlock was found responsible for the attack. Das gesamte Ereignis war absolut schockierend, sogar für amerikanische Standards. Now 50 years later. Was that like an old banana peel? It's like brown. 50 years. So is that like legitimately been there on the floor the entire time? <laughs> So he, he was really so dedicated to this. He was being a method actor. Oh. Mrs. Schlock, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I think this is son of Schlock. So maybe that's his dad, you Schlock. Gotta... I mean, it's his, yeah, it's his, that's... Sorry. Schlock is my father's name. I'm son of Schlock. <laughs> son of Schlock. Can nothing stop him? Can anyone stop him? This poor dead man. I don't he's understand so why he's died. I don't understand the conflict. Is he wearing scrubs? What were those pants? Uh, he come into my city and just slack all over us. A rivalry greater than me and my wife. He gets to be slack. What a joke I will be. Oh, I s this is the enemy of Son of Shock. What what do you suppose they compete in? Like, what is their what's their competition? Maybe that's the police detective man. You know, that's the police chief. Like, I want Schlock in chains. Well, Schlock <laughs> Schlock is all depressed. He's not doing anything. So is it like they both like I can sit on the couch longer than you can, Schlock? Watch me go. <laughs> and that's the whole film. Two hours of two men and that dead guy like trying to get each other unrelated. out of the <laughs> Yeah, Schlock didn't do that. <laughs> Yeah, he just ate too many bananas. <laughs> this is a misunderstanding. Schlock hasn't been out of the house in months. No, it was, it was Son of Schlock. Son of Schlock's the, uh, the depressed one. Oh, right, right. Son so of Schlock. Schlock's yeah. still out Son there of killing. Schlock. Yeah. And Son of Schlock is trying to live up to his father's legacy, well, but no, like, he's well, too no depressed. Wonder, <laughs> well, no wonder he's depressed. His dad is out there killing. He must have looked up to his dad. <laughs> wanted to be like his dad until his dad killed everybody. I was about to mock that couch, but I don't I don't think between you and me we're allowed to mock anyone's couch. <laughs> I don't know the last time I ever owned a couch that didn't have a hole. Yeah, in it. no, we uh I will be honest. We we took that couch from my folks' backyard 
<laughs> it, it had been outside for like three days, but that was enough time. Uh, yeah, Claudia, that that is a woman repelling repelling couch. Uh, Claudia commented on that that when we first started dating, she saw that couch and almost considered like breaking it off right there. <laughs> she was just like, "Oh no, <laughs> what does this say about him on a broader level?" It says we found a couch. <laughs> All right, so cheese and the son of schlock. That was uh, probably not the laziest video Ooh. that we've gotten, but it did depict the most laziness on screen out of any of the videos so far. I'm pretty sure schlock didn't get off the couch. I think it was terrible. I think that uh, it represented everything that's wrong with society today. Too bit. You don't even understand. Son of schlock is the story of the common man. It's the story of the common man, okay? I kind of get but, it. This generation is too lazy, and what we need is a man on the TV to get up and tell us that we can't just schlock in the, the city that we live in. And then we got to put on our loafers and get up and be like, man, I wish I could be like my dad. for me. I don't think he followed anything. If anything, he doubled down on a bad idea because him making a video this year was a bad idea because I want it disqualified. Okay, but we can't we can't just say everyone is doubling down on a bad idea by submitting content to us. That's idea. a He didn't he didn't <laughs> follow a theme. Can we disqualify him for that? There was no theme. Disqualify cheese. We actually can't. Uh Don Somewhere related. Yeah. I mean cheese is part of Don Somewhere. He's in the server, I guess. He owns a uh, I guess, position of authority within uh the community of Don Somewhere. So uh, I think I guess having yeah, him anything cast he's in rules is like a double he actually did the uh, the theme twice. I don't think anyone else did a double theme. If anything, because he's the czar, nobody can vote unbiasedly, and therefore it's unfair to have him on the ballot. Right. Dude, but you can't be mad right. just because you didn't think to get the czar pooba of Don somewhere in your video. Just because Cheese had the idea first, that's, you know, exactly. he got there, it's fair game. <laughs> next year, next year we'll all know better. <laughs> all right. Uh... Next up is Angus, um, or Eject Mirai, uh, as their YouTube thing. Hello, wall. Hello, wall. It's like a smiley face here. All right, so uh, for context on this one, I mentioned earlier that there was a Greg Con, and there has been, I think, like seven Greg Cons at this point. Uh, a lot of them are not big deals, they'll, or they're big deals for the guys that go to them, but they're really just kind of like little get-togethers. So there was one where they went out in the woods, and they shot like a moisten agate rifle that somebody brought, and then someone else brought bear maze, and they wound up setting it off in the, the back of the car while they were on the highway. Oh, great! And they all had to like bail out of the car. Yeah, yeah. So uh, many of the Greg cons just sound absolutely miserable, <laughs> but because this one came out... To our area. And they were like, we will be in the Kansas City area. Will you meet with us? I was like, yeah, I'll go to this Greg Con. I mean, you know, why not? They all got together and they all rented an Airbnb. And there were like 20 guys or something. Oh, like no. For, for this whole thing. Yeah, it was huge. And none of them, no, nobody had a plan of what to do except for uh, Time Swirl. And then they all ignored whatever time swirl wanted to do. And anytime I suggested something, they all just like did it no matter whether or not it was a, a good 20 person group activity. So like at one point we, we wound up going down to uh, this really nice seafood restaurant in the plaza. And this happened because I was originally traveling with a smaller group and we went in and, and we were just like looking for a place to eat. And I was like, I don't know. There's a lot of nice restaurants down here. We may want to go back up North a little ways. But um, I was like, oh, this restaurant's pretty great. They have this dessert called the chocolate bag, which is like they fill it with fruit. It's a bag made out of chocolate and they put like mousse in it. And everyone's like, oh, that sounds really cool. We got to go eat here. And I was like, oh, OK. And I was outnumbered on, on that vote. But it's like, you know, you do a couple's dinner there and it'll cost you like 100 bucks yeah. or whatever. So it is not a cheap restaurant. And so Claudia was was furious because she was like, where are you eating? And I was like, McCormick and Schmidt. And she's like, what? <laughs> she's, like, she, she's like, that's so much money. You can't just eat at McCormick and Schmidt like casually. And I was like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm just having an appetizer. It's all I ordered. So so I did. But they all showed up, like all 20 guys went in there because uh, they were just like, where, where is everybody? And they were like, we're at this really nice restaurant. And then they all went to this nice restaurant 
and uh, they, like so we we were like unannounced. Like I need a table for twenty, please. Party of twenty, no reservation. Yes, sorry. And while we were there, Artisan asked the waitress. They came out and they were like, "What wine do you want?" And Artisan goes, "What's your pinkest wine?" And that's because Artisan had a theme going. He was wearing like a pink pair of slacks and like a pink shirt, and he was doing like pink. It was pink day. Mm. Because that was the day we were also going to go down to the Green Lady Lounge. And so he thought it would be fun to do a color theme. He would be the pink man at the Green Lady. (laughs) And so he was like, oh, I'd like your pinkest wine. And she's like, well, we could do a rosé. And he goes, is that your pinkest wine? And she goes, well, I don't know. I mean, they're in green bottles. And he goes, well, you can go back and check. I I won't mind waiting. If you'd like to check and see which of your wines are the pinkest, I'd like whichever one is your pinkest wine. And, uh, and I, I can't remember if she actually did go back, but I think she just like left for a little while and then came back and she was like, I'm pretty sure that such and such is our pinkest wine. And he was like, okay, I'll take that. And his perspective was just like, whatever she came back and told him was pink enough, was going to be pink enough. But, uh, yeah, uh, it was, it was probably a nightmare for the wait staff. Uh, the gratuity was forced. It was not good, optional, good, 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 which good, was good. Cause I was worried. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but pretty much I can never go back there now. Uh, in case they remember me, because <laughs> because that was terrible and I felt terrible. Uh, but yeah, I didn't mean to drop all that on them. But uh, that happened. Oh, they also stayed right next to Oklahoma Joe's, and only one of them ate at Oklahoma uh- Joe's. <laughs> yeah, only one of them did. Another one flew all the way out from Germany, and you know what? He kept doing fast food. He he ate Wendy's mm. and like Burger King and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, American food is terrible. And I was like, yes, when you set out to specifically eat the worst food on offer, American food would be pretty uh, bad. Okay, it? assholes, listen up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you come back to Kansas City for another Greg Con, Alan's taking over Greg Con. Uh, I'm drinking you all under the fucking table and we're getting some goddamn barbecue. <laughs> uh, you may not be able to drink them under the table. Uh, as far as, like, alcohol and party atmosphere goes, uh, some of those guys had it nailed. As far as I understand, there was a there was a, even a small orgy. And uh, that, that one, it, it involved some guy's wife came out oh. with him. And it was, like, two or maybe three guys. And, and so I was told about that. I was told it was incredibly awkward. As you would imagine, a small person orgy where everyone else was just like, okay. Uh, like... The wife apparently was just, like, on her phone for a good portion of it until her husband was like, hey, babe, do you want to get involved? And she was like, oh, I didn't realize I was invited. Uh, Times World was telling me that they were warning him. They were like, oh, she's totally crazy. She's really weird. You know, like, you'll you'll find out she's really strange. And he was like, I don't know. I thought she was totally normal. We had a really fun conversation about car accidents. It was really funny. (laughs) So... (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. For example, while while we were down there, we were going to go to the Green Lady. And uh, I've actually got two stories associated with this. I I had brought all of my pink clothes so I could could be the pink man at the Green Lady. I thought it was going to be really cool. I thought I was going to be cool. We never went there. But we did go to a fancy restaurant, and I wore all my pink. I got there. I ordered the uh, the salmon, which, as you know, salmon's pink. Uh, and then uh, I uh, I also ordered uh, like a like a cherry kind of dessert, something like that. Uh, I got a uh, what is it? A Shirley Temple. That's also pink. It's like a darker pink. Uh, and then they asked us what kind of wine we want. The lady comes over and she's just hello. Uh, what would you like for the wine for your drink? And I looked at her and I turned and I said. I want the pinkest drink. She was like, what? And so I told her, look, it's okay if you don't know. Go back there, pull all the bottles out, set them up next to each other, and then and then pick the pinkest one. I'll trust you that, you know, that that's the pinkest one, and, and then that's what I want. Uh, eventually, she caved and she told me a lie that, yes, she canister it to me and brought me whatever, which is what I ultimately expected to happen. I, I know there was a lot of drinking and there was a decent amount of party going on uh, but aside from that yeah they really kind of missed out on the sights and everything uh, Artisan wound up staying with me so uh, like I, we went out to Hibachi and did a couple of other fun things that he got in on and some of the guys were really mad about that because like Artisan not only did that but at one point he stole their truck on, a, on the subject of uh, Honk Boy one of the days um, 
uh, I don't know, we were, I think we were planning on going to the Green Lady or something, or we were planning on going somewhere. I was like, I need to go back to Greg's place. I need to pick my stuff up. I don't know if I'm staying here or there tonight. Uh, so I wanted to have my stuff. Uh, and I was like, Honk, can you drive me there? And he was like, yeah, I got you. And then like a half hour later, I'm like, I'm ready to go, Honk. And he just gives me the keys to his truck. I'm like, oh. Uh, so Greg was on a different page. He thought, you thought that we were gonna like go somewhere, like go do something. And I was bringing a group with me. I thought I was bringing a group with me. I showed up on my own. I called Honk. I was like, Honk, hey, I might not be coming back tonight do you need me to drop your truck off? And he was like, no, that's fine. Just put, just refill the tank of gas. Uh, I forgot I did not refill the tank of gas. So that's, uh, I, I owe you that still. After I heard that everyone else went to a jazz bar without me and Greg, I, I didn't feel bad about stealing Honk's truck anymore. I, you know, at that point I was vindicated. I would have felt bad, now I don't. So they were like stuck in the house. They couldn't go anywhere that they couldn't walk to because Artisan just like stole the truck that they were using to get around. Yeah, let me know if you guys come back here or go to Denver. I like Denver. But anyway, though, uh, next up, Space Maniac. Yes. I have finished it. It is written, but I cannot implement it. I could have if I had been a different me, one who could not have written it. My child could have if I had been a me who could have had one. But this me, so close to capable, will die. The promise will go unfulfilled. This nation will fall to ruin, to schism, to faction, to war. I have seen it. In a thousand years or more, none will be born who can fulfill it. But you are here now. You who the world takes for granted. But I know the truth. Don't shy away now. I have long known. I accept your secrets just as I accept my own. Take up the mantle, watch over them, nudge them when you can, when you must, and when the world is ready, when a blood as strong as my own courses in the heart of these lands again, guide them. Keep them from my path, nurture them, and when the time is right, give them this. They will do what this me could not, and you and I will finally make peace. Yeah, so I don't really get that one. But uh, it's yeah, over. Yeah, that, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> Mercifully short for a video I don't really understand. Sure. That's... Yeah. So, moving on. <laughs> yeah. That's... Yeah. That... Yep. <laughs> that video certainly happened at me. <laughs> the, but the good news about a video that we don't understand is that it's also very hard to razz on because uh, we just didn't get it. <laughs> so... All right. Next up is Blue Light. And this is actually 2-Bit's brother. Oh. Submitted this one. So, yeah. Yeah. On top of having the, the Moxie to do it in the first place, he actually does an animation. That's uh, It looks like kind of one of those uh, mobile phone games. Yeah. But I mean, he really put it together in less than a month. So this is uh, this is the type of 3D animation you get in less than a month. Yeah. I can just, I can just hear the TikTok voice over this. Ride your bike challenge. Can you go far on bike? Download mobile game now. Oh yeah, this was also one of the videos that adhered to the themes. We had three themes. The okay. themes were double down on a bad idea, uh, just a small favor, or anything done somewhere related. Uh, some of the videos didn't follow the themes at all, but this one is actually doubling down on a bad idea. So not only did he... Not only is he not part of the community and submitted a video to us anyway, he followed the themes. What? I don't know what to say about that. Total outsider move. Yeah. Just shake things up following directions. No, yeah. That was... I, I dug it. <laughs> Better than Dwarven Defenders, Defenders video. Yeah, yeah. Happily, happily not Dwarven Defenders video. I've been glad that everyone's video so far has not been Dwarven Defenders. Except for Dwarven Defenders video, which was Dwarven Defenders. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that was that video, an animation, and by 2-Bit's brother, no less. Which means that we can get yeah. really mean. Yeah, to start with, Wait. I want to say that your brother <laughs> is ugly. 
Like, man, he's got pock uh, over his face. The guy looks like uh, the moon. Uh, he smells <laughs> like a pickle wrapped in ham. Well, wait, wait, hold on, guys. The reason I said that he's my brother is so you'd be, you know, a little bit more chilled back. Not so that you'd, like, insult him more. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, in that case, I've never met the guy. No, I was actually really excited when he got started on it. Because he was, he was like, oh my gosh, this is a great excuse to get into Blender and do an animation and learn a couple of things that I want to do. I was like, yes, that's the, that's the whole point. And like the rest of my family, I was like, hey, you should make a video. You should make a video. And they were like, yeah, but him, he made one. So I was very happy. For a lot of people, when I announced this and I was like, yeah, you got a month to make your video. People were like, oh man. And then they had these like big ambitious ideas. Like I'm going to do a whole animation. I'm going to do this thing. And they were all jazzed up about it. And we got to the last week. I was like, no, <laughs> you were never going to accomplish all that. So the fact that your brother said to himself, I'm actually going to do an animation, and then he completed it, uh, that is uh, worth commendation. Whether he wins or not, that, that was a lot of work. And uh, at least as, as people who have also done, like, you know, <laughs> like a lot of work yeah. on content, uh, I, I see what he put into it, and it's, it's, it's commendable. Personally, I would have liked to see more of the ways that they fell into the pit. I feel like having two and then having like a dozen people in the pit was kind of fast, but also, you know, animation. I can't blame him, yeah. you know? I do think it was funny how at the end, he had the he had the guy, instead of uh, slapping himself in the face with his hand, he brings his whole head down to the hand. That's how you face the right? slaps out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you head bang into your, like, you know. I will say the only thing you needed on that was a little anticipation on the animation. So cock the head back first and then slam it down. And then there you go. That would have sold it. All right, next up is not even a person. And they go by nobody on the server. All right, so we've got Goblin smoking. He looks pretty content smoking. He's got his, uh, his bed there. Uh, you know, uh, we probably should have put a certain general warning before this started. This guy's got some eyelashes, though. Do you think that's natural, or has he got, like, mascara on? Definitely got the mascara on. Aw, oh, man. He's tuckered. He's sleepy. He was taking a nap against the wall until he saw... I oh, my God! Alligator I mask. sense evil! Ah, <laughs> oh, alligator man. <laughs> Maniac in the street tearing him apart. Oh, God. <laughs> All the action is below the screen. Don't worry, audience. We will not get an R rating for this video. That's all right. It's Rainbow Dash there. I remember those times too, buddy. That's how I feel when I gaze into the eyes of a pony. Oh, the years wasted. <laughs> I was young once. I could have had a real job. I was in college. Like lane one. So... God. Oh, it's a, it's a book. No. Why, what, you know, suit this, this looks like a suitcase, but I don't see the handle on it. I, I don't particularly get why. If he can fit in the suitcase, then he could fit through the bars. It, it doesn't need the suitcase. <laughs> no, I don't yeah, think I don't, that can be on I don't YouTube. Get it. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, that. Action's uh, a little difficult to parse through yeah, some of it. They got inside somehow, it seems. Oh no, he's no, gonna shoot you that's with, Greg. with his Greg Doc. Oh no. <laughs> the forbidden oh, Doc. You know, I think maybe the Dockies they comfort your soul and that gives you more fighting spirit. You know, you don't get you don't you don't lose hope. You keep up your energy. Oh wait, that's the that's the alligator lady keep from going. Spyro three. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, I I get it. He did the whole Peyton. Peyton can't slice. keep you warm through a fight because Peyton can't keep you warm through a fight because you know she's gonna turn on you. I'm gonna be honest. If like your if body pillow really was here, sharp she enough would to me cut in the somebody back of in head. half, that's uh, it's not a good body pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is he in like 
<laughs> Look, I spent a lot of time working on that. I updated a bunch of stuff, Artisan. <laughs> if we play for long enough, you'll see some of it. <laughs> I'm not convinced. I'm not. <laughs> it, it exists somewhere. <laughs> I'm not convinced finishing a Stellaris game is possible. Well, I don't. I don't oh. want to miss out on all the cool stuff I added. We got to start fresh. Oh, hey, there's the bone. Yeah, see, that fight scene was really confusing because it all happened not on screen. Hey, oh, they, they just blew up. I, I Dragon Corps people explosion. incorporated. <laughs> Oh no! I guess on dragons fire. are full of all kinds of like volatile chemicals. So if you shot it with a with a dodgy. something, it might explode. Oh no! It's Neko Arc. The end. And happy. It's and what it's really all about. There, <laughs> you kill people for that for that booty. So, funny story about Dakimakuras. Um I, I still I need to go back and finish it, but uh, I started playing the Mass Effect trilogy uh, on Twitch. Me romancing Tally became a big joke, and uh, everyone in the stream was in on the joke, and everyone loved the joke. Ha 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 ha! They released an official Mass Effect Tally Dakimakura body pillowcase, and I bought it, and I was like, "This will be funny for the stream." And it, it was only when it got to my house that I was like, "Now I have this in my house." And if anyone sees it, they will not understand the irony. <laughs> I'm just the I'm just I'm just the guy who has a body pillow. <laughs> so that video, uh, I have watched that one about three times now, and maybe only at the very last viewing did I fully parse everything that I saw. That was a pencil animation on a white background with no sound a narration or some text or something like that would have made a big difference oh yeah the scene on the elevator where he like gets in a fight and it's not it's like you don't like see him get in the elevator with somebody you know you, it's just like at the end he gets out and there's like a dead body stuffed in the the corner it's like oh that's what's going on i thought what was implied was that he was having to stop at every floor to fight more and more enemies and that's oh that would make on. sense too yeah I, I thought that there was just someone else on the elevator with him. Yeah, I thought that's what well, I thought that's why like the gore was growing slowly yeah. and stuff. But I could be it was wrong. just going I up. I mean, it was a long-ish elevator ride, like a stressful like fight going by real time, it's probably like a couple of minutes. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, though, uh, the Dakamakura battle, I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, at, at least uh, once once you could understand what was going on. No, I agree. I thought it was a lot of whoa. <laughs> Bye bye. Well, there goes our background <laughs> drop. <laughs> well then, we were using that. Yeah. I uh, I legitimately like that one after like the fifth or sixth or whatever view. Like once I fully understand what is going on in it, it's all like, oh, this is fun. Like this is a fun adventure. But my first time viewing, I had no idea what was going on, and it, it was just like, yeah. I don't... <laughs> uh, even with you explaining a little bit I... to me, I'm pretty lost. But uh... yeah, that's okay. Just just watch it three more times, then then you'll get it. You'll get it, and then you'll be like, oh yeah, this is cool. I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> actually going to do that. Okay. Well, next up we've got 2-Bit. <laughs> Every generation is defined by a particular band, and perhaps no band has been as defining as the Kitchenettes. As part of their first ever DVD release, they agreed to have us document the journey taken to create the music video for their hit single, Things in a Kitchen, in this exclusive bonus feature. We've written more than our fair share of iconic songs over the years. Office supplies and... Oh, things I forgot on my shopping list. Love that one. But when Ash came to us with the lyrics for Things in a Kitchen, I knew we had something special on our hands. Baking soda, baking powder, oven mitt, strainer, pasta, mattress, cookbook, plastic bag, Tupperware, beans, foreman grill. There's nothing more satisfying than getting to put music to a song that really captures part of the human experience. And capture the human experience it did. In its first week after release, Things in a Kitchen top the charts around the globe. Ash has always been a chaotic creative force, which in the past has been essential for a creative process. But something about this project went straight to his ego. I knew I hit gold. It's just a matter of getting these mortals to keep up with my vision. Oh, I was really excited when the Kitchenists approached me to do VFX for their music video. Um, 
I just didn't realize I was going to be the only one doing the effects on their music video. I wanted to bring on like, you know, professional VFX directors and stuff like that to help us plan our shots, but Ash wouldn't let go of his creative vision. And we ended up with crap like him lying on his back on some stools trying to get a fallen effect or whatever. Perfection takes time. And my creative genius cannot be rushed. No, cut! Cut, cut, cut! We're cut, going, cut. Why cut we got it? it all wrong! Okay. Got what wrong? The theme is off. The you, theming? you, I... Okay, drumsticks, I don't know what we're thinking. No drumsticks! No drumsticks! The drumsticks. I want you to, use... to play the drums. Spatulas. <laughs> Spatulas are a way better idea. You... Spatulas are a bad idea. I don't you care think? if it's a bad idea. Okay. Yeah. All of my ideas are good. The only bad idea here is yours. He just kept having bad idea after bad idea. We kept trying to fight him on it, and he'd just come back swinging, yelling. We were doing our best to adapt to Ash's whims on the fly. I mean, one minute he wanted to be in a giant kitchen set, the next he wanted to be surrounded by flying spatulas. It was like a mad circus. Ash was changing the storyboard on the daily, and we were all just rushing to keep up. All right, this is the final cut. I mean, it's been hundreds of hours of work and we barely got it done within the time constraints, but I am excited for you to see this. Salad dressing, wow. whipped cream. Man, this really turned out good. Ball. These effects, the music, Baby everything came so together so well. I'm excited for everybody to come Straighter. see this. Pasta Scrap it all. What? I've rewritten this song, it's perfect. We're gonna start from scratch with the new version. Scrap, scrap. Are you kidding me? We, we can't, can't start from scratch, we've already put hundreds of hours. I don't care. How, if you, I don't care if you put a thousand hours into it. We're using the new version. Ash, we can't just restart. We've accomplished something yeah, great right here. We, we can't we? just... <laughs> we're, we've accomplished? <laughs> yes, what? we were a team here. We put no. so much work into this music. It's on me. It's been my creative vision from the start. Ash wasn't in the best mental state, so we figured we would just call him into a room and convince him that the version we already had was like a new version that he came up with in another one of his creative fugue states. And, well, it worked. Where is my new song? Uh, don't you remember, Ash? You, uh, you came to us last night, um, you said that you would improve the song. You had another one of your creative fugue states, and you, uh, you know, you rewrote it. And so we all here worked really hard, and we came up with this, you know, for your vision, like you said. I, yeah, of course I remember. It's not like any of you... Idiots could have possibly come up with a revision this good. Despite the troubled production, the music video for Things in the Kitchen became an instant sensation. It may have been chaotic, but in the end, I have to admit I couldn't have asked for a better music video. Sometimes it takes a little chaos to bring out the best in you, and we never settle for anything less than extraordinary. These idiots would be lost without me. And so, the journey of the kitchenettes, filled with chaos, stubborn creative forces, and a touch of brilliance, continues. Who knows what they'll create next? In the kitchen. Hey, has anybody ever told you about how Ash eats crayons? Boy, that guy who wanted you to change that stuff sure was a dummy. Well, oh, yeah, he? just absolutely brain dead. The that balls guy. on YouTube, it! The balls! Oh. Yeah, you think I don't know what that was? That guy was me. I came to you in a fugue state and I told you to change everything. And what did you do? I didn't change it, Greg. I didn't change it. I only had the month to work on this video. And you think I could just change everything? But but you told me you would, just like the guy in the video. Greg, and, I, and I, you know I eat crayons. You know I eat them. I told you not to tell anybody. That was between what? us. As brothers. I wanted to give the people the truth, Greg. That, that's what people want is the truth. That there at the screen, that's the real behind the scenes, Greg. Production, production is hell, Greg. That's hell. Oh, if it's hell, then why, why wasn't there fire like I recommended? Because, Greg, I was trying to do this whole darn video, all these VFX with a $50 budget. I couldn't afford fire, Greg. Fire costs money. Wait, $50? $50, Greg. Uh, really? Cause I, dang, I could have sworn when I came to you in that fugue state, I could have sworn you said 50,000. <laughs> oh no. man. No, it's 50. Now I feel like an idiot. Oh God. Oh, oh okay. I'm, oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, boy, I was wrong. That I was, was wrong. That was just miscommunication there. Yeah, we, uh. Yeah, oh. yeah, well, God, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I'm sorry uh, for putting right. you in yeah, the video yeah, and fine. telling people that you are uh, Greg crayons, I suppose. <laughs> Greg, why, uh, why do you eat crayons? Oh, well, I mean, uh, they're colorful. And if you want to have a colorful personality, you gotta eat crayons. 
I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a little crazy. But... <laughs> that... well, I've tried to talk does about it before, but... I mean, he does have a colorful personality, so... Uh, behind the video, one of our only rules was it has to be original. And uh, the way that this actually worked is that we had someone in the Don Somewhere channel that was training an AI voice based on Rainbow Dash. And then, as proof of concept, they took a song called uh, Things in the Kitchen by the, the kitchen. Spoiled Chefs. Yeah, the Spoiled Chefs, a.k.a. Matthew Farley. Yes, Matthew Farley. And uh, and so he, he did that, and he posted it, and uh, Tupit was working, and it was, it was like all this effort. You could see he put on this like face makeup, and the oh, yeah. <laughs> he painted his eyebrows like pink and rainbow. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah. Uh, but I was watching him go through it, and like at first I, I kind of didn't think much about it, but then uh, it dawned on me, and I was like, uh, do you have the rights? Is this like Creative Commons, or have you got in touch with somebody, or what's the deal? Like I was thinking maybe and, it was on YouTube, and they, yeah, yeah. And no, I didn't have the rights, but my whole plan was I was gonna do a kazoo cover of the song and maybe get Greg to actually do a cover of the lyrics, and I was like, oh, that'll be good enough. It wasn't good enough. Uh, it, it was not good enough because uh, technically speaking, uh, like. Like there are rules about copyright, and and I I, uh, I I actually what I wound up doing is I did a rendition of the song for Two Bit that I had hoped was maybe like legally distinct enough, um, which is where I like I resang the song, but I put my own flourish on it, and I like made some music for it. It was kind of jazzy, like it was a little funky, and that was actually what wound up being used in the making of video. Yeah. Um, but after thinking about that, even uh, I realized that probably. Just putting my own spin on the lyrics wasn't enough because I think lyrics are still copywritten, and I don't think that I would actually put you legally <laughs> yeah. in the clear or yeah. made the song and, original. And, and for a while I was like, all right, well I'll try to switch songs because I had already done a storyboard and I had done most of the filming and I had been working on the VFX shots to the original song by the Spoiled Chef. Uh, but eventually I was just like, you know what? I like the original more, and I'm not gonna finish this in time. And so I, for the behind the scenes, which I did finish in time. I, uh, I used Greg's version, and then for the music video, I ended up going with the original song still. Yeah. So, um, but fun story, though. It turns out we looked into Matt Farley, and we found out that, uh, it, actually the guy is, is this, he, he's been on, like, uh, what, what was it, Jimmy Fallon? And a couple I of other things. Uh, he's got a, I think it's Jay Leto. Was, was it Jay Leto? It was some oh, okay. night talk show. Yeah. Yeah, he, it was, like, on a talk show. It turned out he had a song called Poop which um, allegedly was worth a decent <laughs> amount of royalties because kids would say like, Alexa, play poop, and then Alexa would find <laughs> <the song. laughs> and it's fun. So he was like yes. making good money that way. But anyway, the, like a real character, the guy who wrote this song, but he puts his own phone number in a bunch of the songs. And so we were able to just like find the phone number and Tubit actually called the guy and let yeah. him know that he'd made this video. Yeah. Yeah, so and, uh, after I released the video, I called him up the next day. I was like, hey, I, I made this music video. I don't know if you mind, but like, here it is. And he's like, oh no, that's super cool. He went and watched the video. He really liked it. And he was really cool about the whole thing. He invited me to come out to see, uh, he apparently does shows every year. The man has written 24,000 songs over the years. I, I wouldn't even, how do you do that? How do you remember how many, like, any individual song at that point? I think part of what gets you 24,000 songs is uh, songs like this. Yeah. It does Where you make list it of things in you your kitchen. Are corn, muffin, <laughs> mix, olive oil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was one of those things. I, I was like, I, I was like, ah, oh, man, like, uh, we all could have done this song. Uh, like, if, 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 uh, if we knew it was going to be a problem before you started doing the production, um, anyone could have yeah. uh, worked on this. And it's actually kind of funny because um, one of the big things about making a project is that uh, every single part of the project is really important to it. So the writing is really important, the music, the choreography, the visual effects. But the visual effects guys and the animators, whatever, they're those are the ones who like suffer the most, uh, but are most underappreciated for what it is that they do. Because you look up there and like, uh, you know, you spend days working on those visual effects and what does it get you? It's like 30 seconds of visual yeah. feed for the audience. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we have it going on in the background here. Some of these shots, you know, I, I was learning a lot of this process as I was going along. So some of these shots, you know, I spent like 
six hours modeling this whole environment and this George Foreman grill and setting all the characters up on the background and timing everything to the music. And by the time it was done, it was like 15 second shot. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, uh, but one thing I did want to say that I thought was funny about the making of was that you had the drummer side with the, uh, the VFX guy. And I feel like that normally wouldn't happen uh, which Probably is very not. lucky for the VFX guy in this case. Yeah, because yeah. well, because everyone kind of preferences their own wheelhouse. So if you imagine like the drummer would be like not mad at like, like what the VFX guy think about him, he would be like, but Ash, I already wrote the song with you. Like I want to rewrite. Like what do you mean? And so he'd be upset about like his own his expertise own drumming not being, being in it, right. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, I like the beat that I had before. I got to do this thing, the double pedal thing. I, what are you taking that up? Yeah, so the VFX guy, like, uh, he would be left to fend for himself. And uh, in this case, because it's a musical thing, like, if you were making a music video, you're promoting the music. So the VFX guy would be like, we're not promoting the VFX. Listen, you. <laughs> yeah, would, well, I don't care what would, you have uh... to say, VFX guy. <laughs> you slave away. You cut everything. I don't care. Where's the fire, VFX yeah. guy? I don't care if your budget is $50. <laughs> yeah, redo it. Go over budget. You're on contract. It says in the contract. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It, it truly would, you would have no way out. Uh, you know. But luckily, the drummers book up for you. So, so I, I, not to uh, put a, a downer on all this, uh, I do want to uh, point out something, uh, Mr. Two Bit. Uh, back when we announced this, what was the uh, specific color that you said you didn't like too much of in a video? Blue. Every there was an entire blue man. It was a blue man's group. I would say that's too much blue. We have to disqualify you for your own rule. I mean, that is a rule that you laid out and you broke it. I'm afraid we do also need to take a vote on whether or not to expel you from the council for this blatant hypocrisy. Everyone in favor of expelling Tubit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Whew. I was really worried that vote was going to succeed. Like, this is not going to be as good with just the two of us and also oh, yeah. whoever's standing next to us. I. Whew. <sighs> I mean, right, did you so moving see on. that video? You're clearly the hardest work in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're honestly, yeah, putting in the effort. Jeez. <laughs> it was so much work. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if I can't leave, you can't leave. Uh, next up is a, is a short animation by Wayward Pony. Good. So that video, that was short. Uh, I loved it. Barely had to yeah. <laughs> do any work for that one. Uh, however, it is several years old and therefore disqualified. So, Wait, is it uh, really? Yeah, that's that's it. That's what? there's hardly <laughs> anything we can say, and it is disqualified. So disqualified. Next up. Didn't make it on time. Very short. All right. Yeah. Our next video is Beaver to Beaver. Here we go. Oh, this is beavers. Yeah, this is uh, this is beavers. Right. And it's like, <laughs> what is facing is, is so this? slow? <laughs> is this a web comic? Are we watching a web comic? <laughs> kind of. We're we're watching a comic, baby. Oh, this is that scene from Fooly no, Cooly where what they do, do the comic thing. Where they explain what fully Cooly is, is, and the grandpa's like, is it like this? And he's like, it's like pinching what? a nipple. I'm wearing headphones. <laughs> I guess I could. See, I there she is, she's pinching a nipple. Explain it. No, they there never it explain is. what fully Cooly is. <laughs> is pinching the nipple, it's because it like that. Like, no, there he is. Like, like, I like the like slow good. pan up to the guy, you know. You, you probably did see him to start, and he does his line. Yeah. What's on your mind, babe? Do you still hear it? You, are you winning? Oh, wait. Yeah, <laughs> you're winning, son. <laughs> no, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why you turn it down? I did turn it turn down. Turn it down. Turn it down for what? I, I still hear it too. Turn down for what? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> you can hear it in. <laughs> be fucking with me. Right, this episode, this one's just going to be memes. Yeah. How, how old should we The get? panning back and I'm forth, sorry. like, awkwardly on this one frame is a little this, bit though. unnecessary. 
Yeah. You ever watch uh, uh, what would Weird Al Yankovic drives through? I looked just at him. Oh, I, I love that. Me. <laughs> I looked at him. <laughs> I looked at me. <laughs> he said, I'm I sorry. I looked at him. What did you want? <laughs> 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 I mean, what would? What's crazy said, is what? that, like, this wouldn't be awful if it was like, you know, oh, three quarter shot on with the one character. Then you shoot back and forth. Just that would be how this stuff kind of works sometimes. But it's like a side view, and you're just sliding back like, and forth between the side it's view. It's like a goldfish was swimming back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. And we just we're back like, you know, again. the camera was stuck. We're back. Yeah, is he's like, is he talking what do you again? Mean it's stuck. Just. Throw it through the window. What? Are you crazy? Yeah, there's they're talking. Oh, yeah, there's Turn dialogue. Your volume up. I got some earplugs. Uh, yeah, well, they're, they're mumbling. I assume. They're, yes. they're having an argument okay. about that. Why did you eat my? What? Did you eat my ginger ale? Did you drink my ginger ale? Did you drink my ginger ale? Turn your damn pop. <laughs> because I've got other things. things. No, I don't. I have ginger. I had Come ginger down. ale. <laughs> It must be Nobody else drinks it, yes. Hannah! <laughs> you just go around from state to state to looking down upon the drinks and think, Yes, I will Sorry, drink this barely. It's not a big deal. Just, just <laughs> and I looked at him. What is happening? And he looked at me. They've all gone insane. <laughs> and I looked at him. And I looked at him. The slow pants back and forth. And now we all have and this music in our head me. for all of eternity. Oh, God. <laughs> And I looked at him! I looked at him! <laughs> oh my god! And he looked at me! Oh my god! He looked at me! I'll do anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh god, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go back! Yes! What? Oh, my favorite part. Yeah, we're going back! What? Oh, baby! I like that. And the snap! The shove! No, no, he stopped! Stop oh, I was just getting no. into the groove! Stop. 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 Uh, what? Uh, Uh, well, that's the that's the whole point. Is I think the music is killing them. I'm not not real sure on this, but I'm pretty and sure then, the music and then is the killing them. the headphones winked. All right, they've all been yeah. killed from the beginning. Yeah. That was it. I Are think, we gonna uh, loop yes. it? I think yes. we Are got we it looping? on the first take. You feel no. you feel good about it? Yeah, I think we got I it. Feel, I feel good about the first. Take. I feel good, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can top that. <laughs> so speaking of using copyrighted music, uh, once upon a time. Very late at night, uh, I was drunk and had access to a video editor and Twitter. I decide I, I only did two of them, but I decided it would be funny if I put uh, the chorus of a rap song over genuinely <laughs> sad moments in movies. So one of those was uh, obviously Littlefoot's mom dying. Um, <laughs> I put the chorus to a song uh, called "Back Then" by Mike Jones over it, like right when she dies. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she gives the whole tree star speech and uh passes away and then it's just back then hoes didn't want me now i'm hot hoes all on me <laughs> all right so that video wow we uh only watched it once we watched all the others two times and made sure that we got decent amounts of commentary but, uh... <laughs> The pacing was a bit rough in that one. I'm just going to say uh, we, we, we no, had a no, hard look, time. We, we only watched it once because it was so good that we didn't want to spoil it. You know, the, like the majesty of that first viewing by doing it a second she time. You know, we just wanted me, to savor it. And I, I looked at him and he looked at me <laughs> and I looked at him. Man, well, I, where what is I the didn't get was why the camera from? was like a, a weirdly different camera movement every time it went back and forth between a character and it wasn't like um, walking on their heads or anything it was just like a random part of the room generally on that side generally on this side it's like ah oh, stop yeah oh man it, it's hypnotic it reminds you of the like a like a windows screensaver the way it's like bouncing around <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like it's just like oh my god i'm gonna pass out watching this video what the heck is you can't do this to people <laughs> Just like playing a little rhythm in the background, boom, ba da dum, ba da dum, ba da dum. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not like an exciting rhythm. It's, it's very subtle. So yeah, it's, it's. Maybe that was part um, of it. You know, it was like the music is slowly eating us as the audience. You know, we were being drawn into the experience. Oh yeah. 
drives you equally crazy to everybody else. Uh, yeah, a uh, little rough, could use some work. Uh, constructive criticism. For that type of thing, um, if you want to do that back and forth dialogue between characters, um, ping-ponging back and forth between two profile views, a little bit unpleasant for the viewer after a while. Like, you could do that, like, real fast for an exciting thing. You'd be like, how dare you, what? you know, like an argument. But if they're just having a casual conversation, then you would maybe do, like, a three-fourths view, and you would cut from, like, one character, then the other, then the, then back and forth. And that still gets a little static, but it's because it's a brand new thing. Like, it's a brand new shot. Every dialogue change, it feels a little less monotonous. Whereas with the, uh, the slow, like, smooth transition and then back, it's like you're watching the whole thing happen, but it's moving so slowly. It, it just makes the whole thing feel glacial. <laughs> Like, the, the the video is only progressing as fast as these transitions are moving, which was not very fast. Yeah. All right, so next up is Zed. Yeah, I couldn't quite get this one. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, for context, this video used music that this guy didn't have a license to, so we're going to mute it. Uh, today's episode, Mosty Ham. This guy here, he's all uh, upset because his friend's oh covered in God, blood. Oh, my God, I buy so many hams. And, That's uh, a whole box of hams. He bought a lot of ham. Why did you buy so many hams? And it is well, the ham market's really good. I was thinking I was gonna I was gonna short the stocks. Well, if the if the ham market's good, you wouldn't short the stocks, dude. That means you the Look, ham I'm market's going down. You short I don't the know stocks. how this works. So I guess they agree he got too much ham. Right. Uh, well, he's not an economist either. He can't short hams. Why can't you short hams? That's why he brings up the land before time. Well, because cause they're going up. He bought too many hams, which means that the uh, ham prices are going up. Oh. He created an artificial shortage by stockpiling ham. Yeah. And his buddy's like, that wasn't a good idea. Well, what? So oh. he... Uh, Flies away. Yeah. Ah, uh, reasonable, honestly. I mean, the real danger, that's the, that's the thing about futures oh, investing, he, uh, is that you can technically... He longed the hams to, to balance it back out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was that, was that video. Recording. All right, everybody. So I, I got to assure you... <laughs> Don't don't turn it off yet. Uh, we did not put all the worst videos at the very end. <laughs> we only put some of the worst videos at the very end. Dwarven Defender was at the start, remember? <laughs> so <laughs> we're almost through it. Uh, yeah, that last one was about ham. Ham. So here we are with the hamsters. Um, yep. I feel like this is very in line with the spirit of the previous video. Uh, even if you could have heard the sound, it really was. Um, not a, not a, uh, shall we say, um... Yeah, it was uh, a, little, a little hard to follow. As far as I could tell, the conflict was, I bought too much ham, I know it, you know it, and then I'm gonna buy more ham. And I didn't, I don't know, I didn't really follow the arc. I didn't see the payoff, I don't know what was going on. They mentioned some references, like, did you, have you seen Land Before Time? They mentioned Land Before Time. Uh, oh, yeah, they, they mentioned... said my wallet is as barren as the land outside the Land Before Time or something like that. Which I think is desolate, oh. and so I think that's the yeah the plot uh, is that they, it's hard to find food. They have to go to the promised land. Yeah, yeah. it's just been a long time since I've seen. <laughs> Are you okay there, artist? Yeah, the the club cannot handle you right now. Uh, up next is Three J's, a late entry, a disqualified entry, but we're gonna watch it anyway. And here they are now free dashing young man from Great Britain. <laughs> the free days. Milkshake for milkshake, cherry curd for Dr. P. I trade you a sunset for moonshine and through the trees. Scratch your back real well. A 
to stretch my first please A rowboat made of neck shells will sail the seas All I need from you is the words And I'll do it just you see Ain't no big deal for me Time flies and I'm a bird Small requests you do send And I'll be on my way Conflict in the Middle East to say I will just pack my tent Just give me a sec I'll just Become both presidents Of Palestine and Israel Oh and then A challenge from me to me Chess, checkers, and penis. A big game of penis, that it is. One person says penis, the other person has to say, has to say penis loader. And the winner of this game would obviously be the person that says penis the loudest, ergo the last person to say penis. It is another challenge one could include amongst checkers and chess. Because I'm not trying to rip off uh, REM with their song. Double surrender leads to peace in the Middle East. Yeah, all I need is the word, and I'll just do it just you see. Ain't no big deal for me. Time flies, and I'm a bird. Time flies, and I'm a bird. Yes, time will fly just like a bird. See, I promised you, not all the worst videos are at the very end. Uh, however, that one was... <laughs> that was passable, yes. And also, very late. It is disqualified. So, <laughs> not relevant to your voting. Yeah, we got that one. But like, you got what, to watch two days it, ago? <laughs> or two days yeah, ago? Yeah, I guess it was, that it won't was... mean anything by the time this comes out. Uh, like, a week? No, like three weeks after the deadline? I don't know. Forever, forever after yeah. the death. Regardless, very, though, very late. disqualified. But a catchy song. Um, much, much better than Dwarven Defenders music. Um, yep, yep, yep. Absolutely yep, yep, yep. do not like Dwarven <laughs> Defenders music. Not even a little. Yep. So, uh, if you, whatever you voted for Dwarven Defender, make sure you vote at least a little higher for this video. Um, That's only right. Which, uh, yeah, and this video can only be disqualified, so I hope that you voted. We're almost at the end. We've got one more video, unless we happen to fish out any others at the last second. But, assuming that this is the last video... Alright, this last one is by Phoenix Jones. Forward. For For right there. The, forward is towards the street. Now go left. Jeez, left. Left from where... Okay, okay stay there, Jeez. Don't move Stop. a muscle. Greg, go between artisan and cheese. You are now like between hugging artisan, artisan and cheese. Yeah, but like go left a little bit. You're like hugging artisan and you're a mile away from cheese. There you go. You're good there. That's all right. That's okay. acceptable all right, enough. All right. And cheese, you can take a slight step to your right. Uh, do we have to read? All right, good. Just ever, but nobody move. I can't read that I, fast. I, I, yeah. And the high letter in leave with the P. Fine. Oh, I see. Right, pulls into a McSoy's. Welcome to McSoy's. Welcome McSoy's. to McSoy's. Special deal. Get two for the... Oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. He wouldn't buy anything. He disintegrates out of sadness. <laughs> An episode of Alan Howers. He's in the largest gummy worm. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. He's arrived at a city. It's Slick Sam. Slick Welcome Sam. to Slick Sam's. Well, listen, Ray, we are at the something excellent. Everything's 50% off for you two. Yes, I'll hail us. Essential oil. Samurai helmet. They didn't buy yeah, the, samurai helmet. the samurai helmet. Yeah, yeah. They're never going to make it to Oregon. No. <laughs> oh, man. It's kind of funny how she just used the same face shape for both Linda and Lena, because uh, to be fair, that is pretty much exactly what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and that upsets me that they picked up on that and, and did that here. Had to be Laura Eckert, Greg.
Uh. Well, I'm just gonna ask you. I hardly ever do that voice. All right, you ever own a dog? Well, there we go. I <laughs> bet you dog. didn't have a license for those dogs. No. <laughs> I only charge you for one dog. I'm being generous. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Man. We always buddy. like to oh, work with Gold Oh, it's Buddy Vision. from Alphabet Soup. He, he, was, he was really nice. I'd send him uh, messages. Just be like, how's it going? He'd be like, not as well as I'd like. How about you? And I'd be like, not as well as I'd like. Be like good, good, good to know we're in the same boat. <laughs> oh, hey, it's uh, it's Pilaf from the hit special song, uh, Tubby Wubby Pilaf Waifu by uh, the world famous Arsene Bogum. I haven't heard that one. I didn't know you did that. Throw it up there. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, copy, copy strike his video. He stole your melody. Yeah. Stole yeah. my music. Hector Putterdale. I missed this one. I really Daniel enjoyed Putterdale. Wizards of Talon. I liked that you one. You liked that comic? Yeah. Uh, the Talon of a Cop? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can go on about, like, uh, what was I doing with that and why did I stop it? But uh, we'll do that in the commentary, I suppose. Uh, Jim and the Romantic Journey. I also like Jim, Jim and the Romantic Journey, Greg. And it's Gus. <laughs> Why don't you just have unlimited resources and never cancel any project ever, Greg? Yeah. Just keep going, regardless of how well they're doing and whether or not. <laughs> <laughs> just be surviving? successful, like, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Look, all you have to do is just, just make so. them not? work. I don't want to be successful, too, but... I then want to you be can't underground. be a starving artist. I, I'll go away from my roots. That's you, Greg. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Rupert. Do you still have oh, Rupert? Rupert. Uh, we might still have him somewhere. Oh. Like, I, I, I might still have him Rupert. somewhere around the house. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? do that to Miles. Because... <laughs> yeah, yeah, use him to tell stories like to Miles. That. Hello, friend Miles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I don't gonna think tell so. you the story. Miles about doesn't the like hungry, scary hungry stuff. Caterpillar. Okay. It's still, know the waste how long is this? Like I, I am surprised. I don't know, minutes. but he, he, they reference almost everything that I can think of that I've done. Yeah. Uh, like they got, they got Benny oh, there's from the rabbit, uh, the homeless. Yeah. Orphan. Yeah, uh, Kit's, Kit's Orphanage. Yes. Um, oh, which originally was going to be named Kit's Fiscally Responsible Orphanage. And then everyone was like, I am not going to type that into the search bar. I swear to God, I will kill you. Oh, man. I don't know about the entertainment quality of that video necessarily, but they had uh, referenced just about every single thing that I can recall doing. Uh, they had Steve Boy Hot Dog. They had Jim of the Romantic Journey. <laughs> Semi intelligent. Yeah, I was impressed. I, I completely forgot about the. Yeah, they had the robot from the. Oh, did box they have the ro video game? Oh, okay. Yeah, I've got, I was advertising that for a while. It was funny because Cheese, Cheese is with us uh, here, and he was like, I don't recognize like half of this stuff. So I feel like all of this kind <laughs> of needs a, a bit of a, like an explanation for some of the things that you saw. And Semi Intelligent, we did run some stuff for a while. I did a couple of animations for that. It was a solo type of thing. And I was not really an artist when I first started learning to animate. I just dove into it or did work around. and I uh, really knew it kept was up with pencils awesome. very much. Um, he did a comic for Semi Intelligent where it was everybody was drawn professionally and everybody looked good and everything. And we actually started on a second one, but it never got finished because pencils is very busy. Uh, he's got a lot of projects, and he right, takes so commissions Peyton, and everything. Peyton wound up with large with large breasts, and uh, she didn't originally have them. Uh, Petteref did the original concept art for her. Like he he was the one who kind of conceived how those characters should look. But then when I started trying to do my own drawings and my own stuff, uh, I was doing what you call symbol drawing, where you draw what, how I you say? imagine things. In uh, your gosh. And then there was Jim of the Romantic Journey. They they mentioned that one, and uh, Jim. Uh, it was about this kid named Steve, the boy hot dog. 
And his opening was actually pretty good. Like, he meets a girl at school, and he's like, oh no, she's going to figure out my secret. And she's like, what's your name? And he's like, I am Steve, the boy normal. And uh, that was kind of... Uh, what else did we see that we did? We saw Slick Sam from Radio Skyline. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the less dumb things that I did. Yeah, that one, that one was a podcast that I was doing. I was just filming uh, Radio Skyline. I was just, like, uploading that to my gaming channel. Oh, you can still they, find the podcast the online. Talent. They had, um... Oh, the talent of a cop! Yes! Based on an actual role-playing game, uh, I played the, the wizard Daniel Putterdale. And uh, that one was going along fine, but the problem with that... Yeah, as I got a certain ways into it, and I, I began to realize, like, Daniel Putterdale was the only one carrying a lot of that. Yeah. Rupert, because Rupert guys, was, like, uh... Rupert was kind of cruel because Alan, like, had told me maybe the day before that he's like, yeah, puppets creep me out. And I was like, oh. And then I just, like, got some supplies and I made the most horrifying <laughs> puppet. And I was like, Alan, I got a brilliant idea. And I was like, and it's great because you'll barely have to act. You'll legitimately hate this puppet. And he's like, I legitimately do, Greg. Good directing call. <laughs> And, and I, I've never, I've never been mad about it. But uh, the way I always explain it is, I was like, "Yeah, I told Greg I was afraid of puppets," and like a week later, that fucking thing was in the house. <laughs> you really did. Like I immediately abused you. Like confided that in me, and the first thing I did was abuse. That. It was, it was definitely exploiting something he told me that he felt uncomfortable about. But he was a really good sport about that. And uh, you know, if he told me no, then I would have been. I've ended. We decided to end this video on uh, this particular, uh, this particular one, just so we could wax on about the way things were, how it was, you know. And uh, it's been 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 fun talking about it. But it was also a lot of fun watching all the videos and uh, all that jazz. A uh, big thank you to everybody that submitted a video, even the people that we made fun of. It wouldn't be this without it. So. But yes, uh, I'm not sure exactly how all this is going to be edited at the end and what it will look like, but uh, hopefully it came out well and uh, on time. And, uh, you know, that's, that's as much as I can say. Uh, Alan, thanks for joining me for the commentary. Ah, oh, good, good, good to be yeah. here. Great. A uh, lot of fun. With, yeah. uh, save for one moment, yeah, lots of fun. Except for the one video, <laughs> which we all agree we hate. Yeah, but thanks for all the submissions. Uh, that was that was great. Uh, yeah, and I uh, hope you guys all have a wonderful night or uh, day or whatever the case. And that's it. Get out of here. Bye.